freshly prepared, home delivered, restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery, specialized affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from homebistro.com? Restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce. The charbroiled chicken romesco. Or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with homebistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with homebistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. black and gold family man we in there for another installment of the sports coma big ups to the great saint thank tank we in the building with this one big ups to the family members appreciate y'all for joining me in this episode this monday edition of the sports coma we're in the building and like i always say welcome 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 you're now rocking with the sports coma with big q and the guys where we have intense entertaining educating and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q chiming in on this edition, and I'd like to welcome all of the great members of the Black and Gold family members. I salute you. I salute the great Saint Thank Tank, the best of the Black and Gold Nation is well represented. Who that to you? Thank y'all for joining me on this fantastic Monday. Uh, and this is we're gonna make try to make it a fantastic Monday edition of the sports coma. We in the building. What's up, baby? Big ups to you. So big ups to all the family members. Much love to the family members in the live stream, man, as we get going with this one. And I'd like to give a big shout out to the entire family member, the entire base out here, man, that's representing, that's doing the best that they can do out here. Much love to the family members, man. Much love to you. If you guys can hear me loud and clear, give me a hoot at, and we'll keep it rolling, baby. Everything all right with the mic? We good? Y'all let me know in the chat. All right, family, let's get it going, man. Big ups to the family members in this thing as we hit you with the uh, with the who that roll call in the building. Yeah, so big ups to the family members. All right, Jerry Paul Jr. in the building. What's up, brother Jerry? Who that to you as well? Much love to you. Good to see you in the chat. Cameron, what's up, Cameron? Good to see you in the chat. Much love to your family. Appreciate you being here as well, and we sending our, our blessings and uh, all the love that we have to our uh, family member, Cameron, who's having a bit of difficulty in there in, in, in his family. So uh, much love to you, Cameron, and uh, I'm glad to see that you're holding up okay. But, uh, you know, it's tough, man. You know, it's tough, man. To be honest with the family members, it's tough out here, man. But big ups to the family members, man. Thank you, Cameron, for being here. We appreciate you 
and we love you. Thank you for joining us in the live stream. Much love. All right, with that being said, let's keep going on there. Anthony, who that to you? Good to see you in the chat as well. JT, what's up, JT? Who that to you? Good to see you in the live stream as well. All right, who else we got there? Uh, uh, let's see, Pick It and Flick It. What's up, fam? Big ups to you. Brother Tramal, what's happening, fam? Big ups to Brother Tramal as well. Big ups to you. Good to see you. Who that for life? What's up, brother? How you doing? Young City Night Ward, who that to you? Good to see you. Clint, what's up, Clint? Big ups to you. What's up, Tasha? Who that to you? And uh, big ups to, uh, to my girl Tasha and my dog, Big Sean, chilling. All right, KK504 and 404 Lady. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's right. <laughs> big ups to you, baby. Brian Pearson, what's up, Brian? Big ups to you. Good to see you uh, chilling as well. Tech Saint, what's up, fam? Much love to you as well. Pelicans, Nola, who that to you? <laughs> Save to you as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right. Big ups, fam, and the rest of the family members, man. Big ups to you as well. All right. Eternal Absolute, much love to you. Uh, let's see who else we got there. Oh, oh Cooler. What's up, oh, Cooler? Big ups to you, fam. Good to see you in the chat. All right. Who else we got? Marco. What's up, Marco? Who that, fam? Big ups to Marco. All right. Kenny Sutton. What's up, Kenny? Who that to you? All right. Who else we got there? Uh, G. Reed. What's up, G. Reed? G. Reed 504 in the building. Much love to you. Josh Hoover. What's up, Joshua? Big ups to your fam. Eric Perry. What's up, fam? Good to see you, Eric. Big ups to your fam. Says, who that big Q? Love you, dog. Big ups to you too, Eric. Much love to you too, my brother. Appreciate you for being here. What's up, Brock? Who that to you? Brock Pace in the building. Much love to Brock. What's up, Latasha? How you doing, baby? Much love to you. Appreciate you for jumping in the, in the live stream tonight. Much love to you. All right. What's up, Lamar? Who that, bro? Lamar in the building as well. He said, whoa, who that Q? He says, uh, he said five for Lewis. Uh, okay, all right. From the Army base. All right. Appreciate you, Lamar. Big ups to you, bro. Big ups. Thank you for being here as well. And Iceman. What's up, Iceman? Chilling. What's good, fam? Hayabusa 14 in the building. See, I took the Hayabusa out for a ride today. Who that? It was a good day for it, too, to be, uh, be honest with you. So big ups to you, man. Appreciate you. Revolt. What's up, Revolt? Who that to you as well? And thank you for joining the live stream. Much love to everybody in the live stream. Please strike upon the like button. We got some a few news notes and items. What's up, DLP? DLP 2600. What's up, fam? Big ups to DLP in the building as well. I, 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 I think I might have forgot to give you a shout out. But big ups to all the great Saint Thank Tank. And if I didn't give you a shout out, give me a who that. And I shall give you a who that back, baby. So big ups to all the family members. We're going to go over a few things as the show is entitled uh, Saints New Saints Seek to Extend Contracts of Lattimore and Ryan Ramchek. Of course, this is something that we looked at as we knew eventually there was only one way to get down here. And I, you know, I kind of forewarned the, the family members over a period of time about uh, everything that was going on with the Saints in, 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 in proportion to you know, the fact that we were not going to look the same. We were not going to look the same after this was all said and done. There's absolutely no way that you had to cut all the way down from 80 plus million to zero. You know, get all the way from your over the cap by 80 plus million. Get all the way down to zero and then get up five to 15 plus mil so you can sign people on the team. There is no way you're going to look the same. You know, it just didn't add up. And when I used the tool that I showed the family members when we did the shows a few times, I showed the family. It took 19 cuts for me to get down there. Mickey Loomis, all due respect, probably will get it done in the next six or seven movements could get the Saints underneath zero and then go up plus to free up extra money to sign draft picks and, of course, cheap veterans as well. So, Going to be interesting to say the least, but big ups to the family members. We'll go over a few news notes and items. We'll go over that article as the Saints look to extend the contracts of Laddie Daddy and Ryan Ramchek to our core really good players on offense and defense that we really could use, you know. We'll go over that. We also talk about the article that's showing that the Saints have Latavius Murray and Emmanuel Sanders on the trade block. Also, Malcolm Brown as well. Hmm... I thought restructuring might have been the move right there, right? Not so much. 
I knew eventually Emmanuel Sanders would be a guy the Saints couldn't do too much with that. If they released him, they free up about six million in cap space. So I knew ultimately, I said, I told the family members, said, Emmanuel Sanders, I gave a list prior to it because I know these guys, you know, you have to release them. And I remember I did release Ryan, uh, un unfortunately, Latavius Murray, when I ran that, that uh, exercise. I released both Emmanuel Sanders and Latavius Murray to get there. And like I said, it's simply going to look a lot different, the team. So we just have to brace ourselves for it, man, and see how competitive the Saints are. We're going to be leaning on uh, some young people and some savvy, inexpensive veterans, perhaps. So we'll just have to see. It's going to be fun watching it. I tell you what, man, it's going to be real fun monitoring this whole thing. So big ups to you. Good to see your muse. Muse of abysmal bliss. Who that to you, baby? Good to see y'all here. Much love to you. What's up, Ja Williams? Who that to you, fam? Tyrone Jones. Who that to your fam? Swag fan. Who that to your fam? Big ups to the family members. Thank y'all uh, for gracing the show with y'all presence. Thank y'all for being here for real. Gabe Thomas, what's up, fam? Big ups to Gabriel Thomas. And much love to the beautiful black and gold family members. They are beautiful, strong, and we humming. You know, so with that being said, I'm going to share uh, the articles. We'll get going. And of course, we know that Dak Prescott a couple hours ago signed a four-year deal worth $160 million with the uh, Dallas Cowboys. So I guess Tasha Tasha is probably happy about that. <laughs> I know Tasha happy about that. Dak Prescott signs a four-year $160 million deal to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. That just happened a couple of, of hours ago. So there it is. And, of course, the Jets placed the franchise tag on safety Marcus May. For those who wanted Marcus May as their guy, you know, ultimately it didn't work out that way. The Jets say, oh, no, you don't. We're going to sign Marcus May and make him a member of our team. And that's exactly what they did. All right. So with that being said, family, we're going to start off on a few news notes and items here. Hold on here. I'm having a little problems with my computer. There we go. All right. We're going to start off. We got several orders. We're going to start off with the uh, the top one here. We're talking about the a report coming from PFF among several media outlets uh, that the Saints seek to extend the contracts of Marshawn Lattimore and Ryan Ramchek. And that was posted by Shireen Williams. Uh, you know, this the lady with the, uh, who covers the Cowboys. And she also, you know, when you talk, when you see her, see her on the, uh, on the uh, reports, she has a, a, uh, I got the nerve to have a cowboy jersey behind her with a light bouncing off that per off that sucker. Talk about Saints matters. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> it's one thing to talk about the Saints. It's another one to sit up there and put a pitch a, a cowboy jersey and had a nerve to bounce a light off of it. You know, I don't want to hear about that. So it is what it is on that. But you know, let's get into the article. Now the Saints restructured the contracts of De Demario Davis and Cam Jordan. That happened over the weekend. That freed up over $13 million in cap space. They also restructured the contracts of Breeze, Lutz, and David Onyemata. And the Saints have more work to do to get below that uh, salary cap for March the 17th. But it's not just restructuring. The Saints are doing to lower their cap number. Rappaport of NFL Media reports that the Saints want to do long-term extensions with offensive tackle Ryan Ramchek and cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, which is something we talked about. We knew eventually... They'll have to do that because both of these men currently with Ram check sitting over 11 and Laddie Daddy sitting over 10.2 representing over $21 million on the cap for this year. If you extend both of those guys contract, give them a low figure for this year, uh, you know, maybe something between two to four million. The Saints could very well open up an additional 14 to 15 million dollars. And cap space for 2020 based on the number that they have once they get that extension done between Laddie Daddy and Ramcheck. So that's only commonsensical. And once that happens, that'll pull a big chunk of that cap down, uh, you know, real close. And of course, the Saints have uh, got to do a little bit more. And of course, they're hustling and bustling. We know today is the 8th. The Saints have until the 17th to be able to get that sucker done. And they're humming along to get it. I told the family it was going to be a very eventful offseason with the Saints sitting up there with $80 million. And uh, Mickey Loomis obviously making moves happen. That's why most of these thumbnails have Mickey's face on it because, <laughs> because Mickey's making it happen right now. He really getting, he working overtime to get this done. 
All right, now neither deal is imminent, Rappaport adds, but it's something the Saints hope to accomplish this offseason. If they smart, they'll get this done before the 17th, hopefully. You can free up that extra money. That's a big chunk. Ramcheck entering the final year of his deal to set it's set to make 11.1 million in base and count 11.1 million against the cap. Lattimore enters the final year of his deal scheduled to make 10.2 in base salary and count 10.2 against the cap. So you can see why they want extensions. Extensions hands them out. That means they three or four year deal, uh, a deal step pyramid deal. First year, very minimal, one or two million on that initial deal. Uh, and, you know, you can slide the rest of that cap into, into this year to help them out to get them underneath there. But Lattimore was the 11th overall chess in, choice in 2017, while Ramchek went 32. And these guys have been a terrific tandem for the, especially Ryan Ramchek. When he gets paid, he ultimately probably going to be probably the, the top or the t one of the top five best offensive linemen, highest paid offensive linemen in the game. And once you pay him, what does that mean for a guy like Teron Armstead, which I really do think Teron Armstead uh, could be another guy that's released. I don't know if the Saints going to put him on the trade block, but you got to address that. I know he has a year left on his contract, but is he to restructure Teron Armstead or totally move in a different direction, get cheaper, and start a mini youth movement? A lot of people don't hear the term retool, but the Saints might have to retool a bit because you get rid of guys like Morstead, you get rid of guys like Teron Armstead, Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray. Who do these guys represent? They represent the role, serious key role players in the assistance of the stars, and that sometimes stepped up to be stars to help the Saints get to another level in terms of the talent of the team. Now, with all of the major losses that the Saints have incurred in terms of releasing Morstead, uh, Jared Cook, Josh Hill, uh, and then, of course, they're looking to trade Emmanuel Sanders and Latavius Murray and uh, big Malcolm Brown. And then, you know, this is this this team has been, you know, going to look a little different. And of course, once the additions happen, the uh, subtractions happen, then you can see some of the additions really occur. Now, we did see Ty Montgomery added with Latavius Murray ultimately looking to be traded. You got to look at Ty Montgomery and says he's going to elevate to the second string back role. Dwayne Washington is still there, but you also have Tony. Well, you know, in terms of wanting to resign him, he's a free agent. But Tony Jones Jr. is a guy that's also sitting on the practice squad who the team likes. But do they go into the season with him as a third back? Well, that's let, yet to be determined. The Saints are also really good. And they might go into uh, uh, free agency and find somebody perhaps, but more uh, realistically might be a subject of an undrafted market unless a really good running back falls to him at 28. Question people ask me, Q. If Trevor's if Trevor Etienne, the fantastic running back from the Clemson Tide, falls to you at 28th, do you take him? Do you take him at running back? And if Trevor if Trevor Etienne falls to you at 28, or it's two guys that I would take, you know, over my recommended move of taking a safety or a defensive end, or you know, in like and in, in like uh, a lot of family members saying, you know, taking a linebacker. But I wouldn't want to take a linebacker there unless it probably was a guy who was like the guy out of Tulsa, uh, Collins, who could put his 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 uh, who can be a linebacker slash defensive end type of dude. He could be like a tweener. Really don't want to take no linebacker there. But then again, if Demario Davis gets hurt, what do you do? You know, what do you do? So it might, that might be a situation. But if be that be with all that being said, let's say that those guys, you know, you have. Two guys, Trevor Etienne, the fantastic running back out of LSU, comes from Baton Rouge, and then of course, I mean, out of Clemson, who comes from Baton Rouge, and then you have a guy like Terrace Marshall Jr. that falls to you there. Listen, man, I'm taking either one of those dudes. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. Tre uh, 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 Tre uh, Terrace Marshall Jr. is an awesome wide receiver. He's 6'4", 220 something. He ca runs every route in the tree. Has fantastic hands and and great speed for a guy his size. Just imagine having a Metcalf type of receiver there uh, for the Saints opposite of Mike Thomas stretching the field 6'4". That would be uncanny for whoever the quarterback would be to stretch the field with a receiver that size. And, of course, you have a 6'3", Mike Thomas there as the possession man. Really spectacular. And, of course, uh, Trevor Etienne, is, is uh, game is very similar to Elvin Kamara, just a little bit more power in his game. I would say he's a little bit more power in this game, but very lights out running back. If you don't know who he is, please research, research him. Very fantastic. If those guys fall, I'm picking them guys, man. Those guys are gamers. 
they'll you know they'll make that offense really go into the future. All right, so the Saints looking to do that. Now, of course, the next thing we're looking at is, of course, the report that was put out issued this morning, which was the Saints have Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray among Saints available for trade. So Sanders, Murray, those guys on the trade block, where did that come from, Q? Well, according to John Sigler from uh, Sportswire, this comes from Albert Breer, who breaking this down. A ton of moving is expected to happen around the NFL in the next week. With the league and players union hammering out details on the official 2021 salary cap and dozen of cap uh, cuts preceding for agency, the Saints are one of nine teams currently in the red against the projected cap of 180 million. And Albert Breer reports several veteran players could be moved as the Saints continue to chase cap compliance. Breer reports that running back Latavius Murray and wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders are both available in trade talks. Conversations also surrounding injured linebacker Quan Alexander. Through beer ads more likely to be released than traded while recovering from an Achilles uh, in surgery. Whether he's traded or cut or reworks his deal, there's no way the Saints are going to be on the hook for the 13 plus million Alexander's contract is worth as it stands. Of course not. So with that being said, 13 million. But of course, remember the kookiness of that is that they cannot then restructure that agreement until Quine is healthy. Then they can restructure. I mean, they can then restructure it and go about however they want to go by it. But be expecting that movement as well. Not so much a trade. I don't know what you're going to get in value for a guy like Quan Alexander. But, you know, we know that the, the Saints have Latavius Murray, Malcolm Brown, and, and Emmanuel Sanders on a trading block right now. So what are you looking to get in return for those guys? In my opinion, I think you're looking at draft picks. You know, what would you basically get for those guys? You know, what could you possibly get? You know, another young veteran player for that player, you know, that's possible. But this is more likely as the Saints shed cap, uh, shed salaries, they want to take, uh, you know, draft picks back in return. They're a lot cheaper. So with that being said, it would hurt to see what it would hurt to see Murray or Sanders go. Murray has done nothing but made the most of his opportunities behind Kamara when he had him. When Sean Payton gave him a chance, man, on the depth chart, often sparking arguments among fans of whether he deserves even more touches. Ain't no arguments. He definitely deserved uh, more touches. Come on. Sanders came on strong after a slow start in his first year with the Saints, peaking in week five with a career high a dozen catches for 122 yards. Neither player has been the featured weapon with Kamara and Thomas on top of the roster, but they're exactly the sort of establishment compliments that you want in the team. It's just so, it's just was so frustrating and, and so dissatisfying, family. For the Saints uh, to ultimately, for Mike Thomas to have all those injuries, we didn't really truly see, uh, you know, Thomas and the Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders combination like we really wanted to. Michael Thomas was banged up pretty much the the most of the year, and of course, you look at uh, what uh, you know Latavius Murray did in the limited time that he was able to do, which was spectacular. So, with that being said, man, it, it definitely will be seen. But we also talked about the fact that the Saints do have extra wide receivers that that are making their case to have more reps in the starting lineup De, a lot of people want to see what Deontay Harris could do in the starting wide receiver capacity they want to see what he can do how about Marquez Callaway could he step in and be a slot weapon the only problem is with that both of these guys are really good kick returners and punt returners and if you move them off that slot to the starting lineup you're gonna to have to replace them with somebody so you know perhaps a wide receiver in the draft might be a smart a strong suit and like I said before when you're sitting back at 28th in the draft, the mindset usually if you're not going to trade up or trade back is to take the best player that comes to you. All right. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Tasha, for your super chat. Appreciate you. She said, hey, Q, since I'm so happy about my boy Dak, I just wanted to share uh, and <laughs> sending you some good blue vibes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tasha. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, and, and Dak, man, he deserves it, man. A lot of people think, you know, it might have been a little too much for him. But listen, you know, uh, Dak Prescott been wrestling with the Cowboys for the last few years. And, you know, eventually they had to get that chapter over with. Jerry Jones was getting tired of it. And it's time to move it forward. And now that he got his money. And I can tell you one thing. He means a lot more to that team than what a lot of people thought he did when he when he got hurt. Nobody, I mean, the guts of that team completely, they were completely gutless and heartless without Dak Prescott in there, willing them to win. And I think Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones realized that, that this team just gut, it just, it was gutless. It was heartless without him. His competitive fire and everything that was going on with him, 
they were absolutely gutless. I'm talking about uh, Zeke. I'm talking about uh, the other young wide receiver, Lamb, and 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 Amari Cooper. All those dudes, and, the, and then the high paid guys on the defensive line. They were absolutely gutless without Dak Prescott. They collapsed. They could not put it, keep it together, or what have you. But like I said, he means a lot more, man. And you've seen it when he got hurt in that game. So you know, congratulations to Dak Prescott, man. For getting that big bread, man. You know, he he deserved it one way or the other, and he means a lot to that cowboy team. So uh we should they should be happy about that. They solidify and got the quarterback back there. Now let's see. Now now we gotta get our stuff straight so we can knock them upside the head. <laughs> All right, but the but thank you, Tosh. Appreciate that. All right, let's keep going. But the cap crunch is real while the Saints can make it work without Sanders and Murray. They'll need all the resources they can get to get their hands on. It helps that they have some promising backups ready for more looks like Callaway, Harris, Montgomery, but they're small consolation against what losing these players could do uh, to hurt the overall group. You want more experience help to surround whichever quarterback replaces Drew. At the same time, you want more players on the team friendly, cheap rookie deals, and that's what's promoting Callaway, Harris, Montgomery into prominent roles, which we could accomplish life after Breeze will mean even tighter salary cap accounting than they already were used to in New Orleans, and the Saints will have to make tough decisions to accomplish that. Now, offloading Sanders and saving $6 million against the cap in the trade, $4 million in the release, and on Murray, you get a little over $2.4 million. Either way, makes sense to an extent. At this point, Saints fans should be ready for anything. We are ready for anything. We most certainly are ready for anything. We've been looking at this. We have actuaried this stuff out on the sports coma, and we knew, we knew, we knew. And I kept warning the family members, look, fam, look at Deontay Harris. Look at, uh, I mean, not, uh, uh, Latavius Murray, Emmanuel Sanders. You know, we went down the list. Teron Armstead, you know, da 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 so on and so forth, right? We talked about this and we prepared. And I did warn the family members to say, listen, family, we might have to pump your brakes on the Super Bowl and say NFC uh, title a bus, NFC game or NFC championship a bus. Because we do, it's too many questions. And I can't say Super Bowl yet because, it, you know, too many variables right now to be guesstimating like that. Usually you get a good indication one way or the other, but they haven't done enough for me to see the direction of which where they're going to go. Case in point, who's the quarterback going to be? You know, that means a lot to where we moving forward. If it's Drew Brees, I don't think they go to the Super Bowl. Matter of fact, I guarantee you they don't go to the Super Bowl with Drew on top of this team once they get rid of the guys they brung to the team to help them be a Super Bowl team. The guys that they brung to overload the team with talent, those guys are going to be gone and you're going to be relying on younger players and inexperienced, cheaper veterans. So that means a a small or maybe a step back or so, depending on how fast the new personnel, meaning rookies and, and uh, inexper or, or new veterans that come on the team from other teams pick up what they're doing. You also have new coaches uh, like uh, Coach Richard coming on. His, that requires an acclimation project as well. So things get mixed up a bit because new personnel comes in and then you have to, of course, get everybody online with the same game plan. But Emmanuel Sanders, Murray, and among Malcolm Brown, and, and there are going to be others. Don't expect and, and be watching other things to be added to this list, like Teron Armstead, uh, perhaps. And, you know, we'll see other people, you know, we'll see some other people, maybe a surprise or two. All right, let's move on to the next one here. OK, these are the projected cap contracts. Now, this contracts uh, for the top four Saints extension candidates, which they mentioned, as you can see, uh, Ryan Ramchek, we knew he's going to be a far gone conclusion. We covered that article over as you see Teron Armstead standing up there. But let's go over the list here prevented by John Sigler. What are the next dominoes to fall on the Saints offseason? Some moves are obvious, like the restructure for superstar wide receiver Mike Thomas, especially if his sidekick Emmanuel Sanders get traded. Others take a little more work to figure out, but the clock is ticking New Orleans with more than $46 million to chip away before the Saints can comply with the expected salary cap. More pieces will start moving very soon. Much of the heavy lifting can be accomplished through contract extensions with players whose 2020 cap hits rank highest on the team. Now, whether that's the right move as opposed to trading or releasing them is up for debate. So here are the candidates, four of them, uh, as the, uh, you know, as the mid-March deadline, March the 17th, approaches who should be uh, extension candidates. They say Teron Armstead. 16.2 million cap hit right here. He's definitely a guy that needs to be restructured or possibly outright release. 
projected market value via sport track four years 95.8 million pretty good maybe we can get them get them off and trade we'll see that feels like an overpay but it's the base based off the deal that david bakari signed with the packers when he was armstead's age maybe armstead agrees to a slightly more team-friendly contract but he's been paid top dollar in the past and remains one of the game's top left tackles and should be paid like it. He was arguably the best left tackle in the entire NFL last year, even if that wasn't reflected in the Pro Bowl vote in that time he was. Like some of the other players on this list, signing Armstead to a long-term extension presents an opportunity to restructure his current deal and lower his 21 cap hit. Right now with 16.2, committed to him in the second highest figure on the team behind Michael Thomas at 18.8. Most of this is tied to his 10.15 base salary, which can be reduced and converted into a signing bonus. Finding a way to thread the needle and pan Armstead is worth while helping New Orleans salary cap situation should be the next domino to fall. Now, man, I got big love for Teron Armstead. He's by far one of my favorite people on this team. And I said people, not just players, but he's a great dude. But, you know, if you look at it, you know, I would be in favor of restructuring Teron Armstead. But then again, perhaps you might be uh, more inclined to trade him. Now, you say, well, Q, if you trade Teron Armstead, who else would be there uh, to do it? Well, if you pay Ryan Ramchek, which the Saints will, I think a more uh, excellent move would be centered. To re- if you When you pay Ryan Ramchek, you're going to be a top five highest paid offensive lineman in the game. If uh, Sooner or later, the Saints going to have to make a move on Armstead. If it's not this year, it's next year. What's the difference? You're going to have to make a move on him sooner or later. You got two years left, and the Saints are not going to re-sign Teron Armstead after his contract is up after next year. So whether you make the move now or make it later, it probably would benefit you to make it now because Teron Armstead had a pretty good year last year, and you could probably get some value for Teron Armstead. And somebody be looking for a top-notch starting blindside tackle in the NFL. What the Saints can get for it, maybe they can get a fourth, a third-round pick for him. You know, maybe, you know, get a good pick for him to move him. And then, of course, if you when you sign Ryan Ramchek, my idea is then to slide Ramchek to the blind side. And then you could, of course, draft somebody to go on the right tackle. The Saints are going to be looking at trading a lot of these veteran players to get draft picks so they can build the team through the draft because it's cheap. They don't have the money to go out and spend on all these veterans this year. It might it's going to change next year, but most certainly this year is just it's, it's not feasible. All right, Ryan Ramchek, we covered this in the previous article. He has the 11 million, over $11 million cap hit. We talked about him ultimately getting an extension, which could make him one of the highest paid offensive linemen in the business. Now, he's only uh, four right tackles earning more than $14 million per year. One of them is Taylor Mouton is on a franchise tag. Lane Johnson was paid so highly because of his move to left tackle was envisioned. So he's getting paid, and I think Ramchek's better than both of them dudes. So expect Ramchek won't cost as much as Armstead has left his legs. Then again, could he move to Armstead's spot? Now, see, we this is something I've been saying for some time because I've been envisioning that over two, three years. I say Armstead sooner or later is going to have to leave, and this man's picking up on it. I've been saying that because I understand when you pay Ramchek and make him one of the highest paid offensive tackles in the business, you're not going to play him at right tackle. You're going to slide him over to left tackle and make him a blindside tackle. And then you're going to draft somebody on the right tackle, and then you'll build that offensive line through the draft. It's cheaper that way. You know, so he's even this guy is hitting on that. Look what he says here. He says, so expectation is Ram check won't cost as much as Armstead. Then again, it could you he could move arm move could be moved to Armstead spot. As a standout left tackle in college, Ramshet was expect, expected to stay in the NFL and played his first couple of games at left tackle in relief of Armstead with the Saints, but he moved to the right side and hasn't gone back. Now, if the Saints think Armstead could be a declining player, either due to age or mounting injuries, which he already always has, it's possible they trade him and put Ramchek in his place and draft or sign a right tackle. Either way, retaining Ryan, Ramchek at $15.6 million per year is a bargain. That is right. Now, the reason why I say that is because there's no way that you're going to have uh, two guys on your line. The Ryan Ramchek was going to get paid this figure for over 14 million a season. Right. To be a, a tackle. He's definitely going to slide over to the blind side to protect the quarter. He's your best offensive lineman. He has to be the guy to protect the blind side of the quarterback. Now, if you look at that 15 million projected figure that he'll get once his deal done, versus the 16 that Armstead has, and ultimately you can restructure that down. His base salary is 10. You know, that's a bit much for a team that's still 40-plus million in the hole. 
So what you would want to do is you would kind of either my say my my goal my my thing is I would trade Armstead if I can get something for him I would trade him, you know ultimately or try to release him um, try to trade him I would try to trade him to get something for him because the Saints are not going to resign him in a couple of years you might as well move on from him just like you moving on from a lot of these guys. You might as well get ready to move on from Armstead as well and do it all at the same time. Armstead, Armstead, Drew. When I often said last year, all of last year, that when Drew sits down, he needs to take Armstead with him because that means that that ilk of player is gone and they're starting like a mini youth movement underneath the core members of the team. So with that being said, I agree with this writer and we're hitting on the same uh, logic base here. Marshawn Lattimore is the next guy. Of course, Laddie Daddy. Uh, is is uh, projected value six million a hundred million dollar cornerback? That's a lot of money to play Laddie Daddy. And then the big question is, if you pay Laddie Daddy that money, then does Laddie Daddy stop having these la- these whimsical, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, mind frames when he have half ass brings it to certain games? Now he got better last year, you know, uh, you know last year. But I think Chris Richard, you know, with him being a new defensive back, will br- you know, coach will bring. Uh, you know, something out of Lattimore. He, I think he will do a really good job of kind of bringing some extra skill sets to help Lattimore improve, help Jack Rabbit improve, help, you know, the rest of these guys improve and whoever they then use at the safety spot, whether that's Chauncey going to Johnson or simply go out and draft the safety or sign one of these uh, cheaper, really good cornerbacks uh, like Mike Hilton from used to play for Pittsburgh who's out there who I really like. Uh, the, uh, uh, Mark, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I can't think of the man name. Uh, cornerback for the uh, – he was a uh, played in starting spurts for the Chargers last year. I won't say his name, Mark Johnson or whatever it is. But anyway, you know, I had him on my fantasy team last year, and he was pretty good, man. The Saints could look at getting that guy. That guy, Mark D- Davis. There you go, Mike Davis. Mike Davis from the Chargers. He would be a really good addition, I think. So you can get him uh, and plug him in at that cornerback position and, you know, and watch things go. And remember, you know we got a lot of work to do in that secondary. But extending our ladder more, look at that, $100 million in six years. Do we do that? But look at it. Even though he's a three, the guy's a three-time Pro Bowler, he's t- 25 years of age. It's tough to see a way the Saints not to pay him $100 million. Of course, the Saints right now don't want to have that much turnover by getting rid of Laddie Daddy or trading Laddie Daddy. You still have Jack Rabbit. You got to restructure his contract. That's still a part of it as well. Then, of course, Patrick Robinson needs to get out of here as well. And then you don't really have that much Really serious depth. You got a lot of practice squad players to keep Washington, Pell, Grant Haley, those guys, but no real veteran that can come in or a high pick there that can help, uh, whether it's the first or second pick in the draft to help out with the cornerback room. So, you know, that's why I say the Saints are kind of in a position where they're going to have to pay Lattimore because, just to avoid having too much turnover in the secondary. So with that being said, Ramcheck and Armstead, Lattimore is on the final year of his contract, keeping him at 10.2 isn't feasible. If the Saints haven't seen enough consistent tape for him through four years, maybe they pull him. Listen, if the Saints want Marcus Williams, they want Lattimore. In my opinion, Lattimore plays is a lot better player than Marcus Williams. So if they want Marcus Williams, they damn sure want Lattimore. So look out for them paying him some money. That's why I said if when they pay Lattimore, it's going to be unfeasible to keep a guy like Marcus Williams, even though, and I'm going to show something with y'all momentarily, and here he goes. Marcus Williams. Now, he's not under contract, but his projected value is five years at almost $68 million. So, so this one's tricky because unlike the other players listed, Williams not under contract beyond March the 17th. So the Saints, if the Saints want something done with Marcus Williams, they're going to have to do it before, before the 17th. And other teams can start making offers on him on March the 15th. So there's a two-day window there. Where the Saints, he'll be cleared. So if the Saints gonna do something with Marcus Williams, we'll know by the seventeenth of uh, March. So if teams start making offers for him, and they will at the fifteenth, and uh, the Saints will have two days to see if they can, with the you know, see if they can get a deal done with Marcus Williams. So what happens to Marcus Williams' family? You know, we'll see. So you'll know by the seventeenth whether or not the Saints want. But various reports are coming out that the Saints want uh, Marcus Williams as well. Well, the question is, can you afford to pay Ryan Ramchek, Lattimore, and Marcus Williams? You know, that's the question. The question is, no, you're going to pay Lattimore. You're going to pay Ramchek. You're going to have to find a safety in the draft to replace Marcus Williams. Bottom line. 
You're not going to be able to follow, but we'll see what the Saints do on this. And 13.5 million or so per year for Sport Track isn't too bad. All things considered, it lines up with other young standout ball hawks like Eddie Jackson's 4.6 million, Kevin Bayard's 14.1, slot with a slight discount. Now chalk that up to the minor inconsistencies in Williams' overall game, which he cleaned up in 2020 by improving his tackling. He's an important part of the defense success, and the Saints should work hard to resign him. I don't know if I agree with that. At the same time, his agents owe him to push the envelope and chase the $14 million per year, if not better. Maybe they can meet in the middle at the suggested $13.5 million. I find it very hard to believe that the Saints will be able to sign all three of those guys. I really do. You need, you're going to sign Ramchek, and you're going to sign Lattimore, but they didn't have Marcus Williams there. I, I, I'm going to have to see it for myself and see what they're going to do. Not saying it's impossible, but it's going to be difficult when you're still trying to clear money to get underneath so you can then have enough money to be able to give to Ramchek and Lattimore as well as to talk about getting Mark to Williams. Williams is not feasible. He's not feasible now, and he's not feasible after March the 17th. By all means, start looking for another safety, please. But the more important part of the debate between Saints and his representatives will be the contract structures and the guarantees. If his 2021 cap hits too high, it would limit how effective New Orleans can pursue other free agents. That complexity is why they should take care of this as soon as possible. Me, I'm against this signing. And I've been saying this. I like Marcus Williams. He's a really good dude. But he's not the type of safety. You want a mean-ass safety that, that, that comes downhill and knock your head off. That's not Marcus Williams. It's not Marcus Williams. And perhaps, you know, and, and perhaps Chris Richard can pull some game, some aspects of his game out of him, make him more, in, more intelligent because he's a smart dude. But to make him more intelligent, work on his technique, his tackling technique, Richard can do that. He perhaps he can. I can only I can only dream that if Chris Richard can turn Marcus Williams into a camp chancellor, I would absolutely love that if he can. And I maybe I'm putting too much on Coach Richard to make the jump from Marcus Williams to Cam Chancellor. But if he could do something like that, man, I would absolutely love that part of his game. But we'll see. But the money is a main obstacle in the re-signing of, of Marcus Williams, no doubt about it, especially when you're talking about the two the two aforementioned guys in Lattimore and Ramchek. It's most, it's most concerning. And of course, they will have to get rid of Armstead and a few other people to make that happen. We'll see. Now, also, let's look at this article, and it's coming by way of Canal Street Chronicles, Chris Dunnell's. Says, will the Saints apply the franchise tag to independent free agents? It's pretty good, right? There's only one name that makes sense, and let's see what makes sense too. Of course, you know who it is. If we were paying attention, tomorrow represents the final day of NFL teams could franchise their pending free agents. What's a franchise tag? It's a one-year contract that a team could use on a pending free agent with one with with the amount set for the collective bargaining agreement, or an equal uh, equal to 110 percent of the previous year's salary for that player, whichever is greater. Now, over the cap, it estimated that franchise tags uh, amounts for the 2021 year by position. Now, part of the rationale behind slapping the tag on a free agent is if the projected tag amount is less than the salary you anticipated being forced to pay if you were in a new contract, meaning that if you had somebody in free agency, or oh, well, the free agent or the market stipulates, okay, we're going to, we won't, we, we're willing to pay them 14, but the cap, let's say the cap is at 10 or 12. Franchise tax, excuse me, is at 10 or 12 versus the uh, market value. So a lot of teams will then say, listen, we're going to boom. We're going to tag them like Denver did with Jonathan Simmons, like the Jets did with Marcus May and so on and so forth. But a part of the rationale behind slapping that tag on the free agent is the projected tag amount is less than the salary. So there is immediately a second reason to apply the franchise tag, and it doesn't have anything to do with the value of the contract necessarily. It's about the duration. A franchise tag is another guaranteed year of a player on your team. If there's a pending free agent that you'd be willing to pay, but who wants to sign elsewhere for agency, you could choose to apply the franchise tag in order to ensure their service for at least another year. Now, for the Saints, knowing they are still approximately $60 million over the cap, they will not have that luxury. The franchise tag will be used to find value, not to overpay to keep someone on the team. Now, looking at the majority of the Saints pending for agents, most are expected to make well below the over-the-cap projected franchise tag figure for 2021. Now, Trey Hendrickson, who Sportrack estimates will earn an average of $10 million per season, is cheaper to sign on the open market than try to tag. Now, when you think about Saints pending for agents, there are only three high-profile names 
their quarterback, Jameis Winston, safety Marcus Williams, and the aforementioned Trey Henderson. Everyone else like Rankins, Hardy, and others we know will sign for less than the franchise tag amount, whether the Saints or elsewhere. Now with Winston, he only signed a one-year deal with the Saints last year, about $1.1 million. So while he will likely earn more the offseason, the odds for a deal over $24 million is incredibly low. I agree with that. So if Jameis doesn't look like a reasonable tag candidate, that leaves Marcus Williams. Marcus is the only St. Penny free agent who sport track predicts the market value, a current estimated cap with a market value of $13.5 million per year and a, ta- and a tag estimate of only eleven. So you see the menial difference right here. While the tag would be employed in a scenario where they would put the tag on him if it's at 11 versus letting him get out there at 13.5 or 14 million. See, they won't compete with that, that market value. That means if the Saints were indeed to apply the pr- uh, franchise tag to any player, it would be Marcus Williams, especially if they couldn't convince him to stay otherwise. But because of the entire cap hit of the franchise tag cannot be extended into multiple years, the Saints' best option would be to negotiate a long term deal with Marcus to free up additional funds for agency, which is a great point because, listen, if you tag Marcus Williams for one year and let's say the tag is like this man said, 11 million, that means that's a one year deal for 11 million. You cannot then structure restructure that tag figure. You got to pay all that in one year. So the, the, the option, the, the, the idea is not to have a big, ridiculous, stupid, high 11 million cap hit for a player for one year. You know, so I'm saying it's not feasibly, economically speaking, to keep on to Marcus Williams. It's not. You know, and of course, they could reach a deal with Marcus Williams. He could sign a deal, a friendly deal to stay with New Orleans, but that's not what he's doing. He fired his agent last year so he can test the market. He wants to get paid. He's looking at Buda Baker. He's looking at Eddie Eddie uh, from Chicago. He's looking at Bayard from Tennessee and other guys who's making that astronomical money. And he wants to get up there. He's looking for his opportunity to shine here. And the Saints don't have the money to pay him after paying Ramchek and Lattimore. It just won't happen. Please find a safety and stop regurgitating talking points on trying to bring Marcus Williams back. He can't tackle. <laughs> I'm trying to make an economic argument on why you shouldn't bring him back. But never mind the commonsensical one is the fact that he can't tackle that well. Now, of course, Chris Richard can help help him become a better tackling defensive back. But, you know, wouldn't it be cheaper to find one that can? I mean, you're you're trading veterans right now for 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 basically draft picks so you're going to use you're trying to accrue those picks for a reason so you can address the needs of the team in a cheap manner so you know just let's just get past marcus williams please sign Lattimore, sign Ramcheck, and let marcus williams go and find somebody else please find please 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 you know don't make me tell you don't make you ask you again but anyway, and then, of course, the last article would be as well as we talked about Dak Prescott ultimately signing his four year, hundred and sixty million dollar deal with our rival Dallas Cowboys. And at least the Cowboys know who their quarterback going to be. You know, Dak Prescott boy, that's an astronomical figure. Four years at one sixty. That's what he's been looking for the last several years. They got who they want. Cowboys quarterback Prescott agreed to the deal, man. And look at it, the particulars of the contract. Look at this in here. $160 million contract, including 126. This <coughs> let me clear my throat on that because look at the guaranteed money. It's a hundred and sixty million dollar deal. At a and and uh, out of 160 million of it, 126 million of it is guaranteed. That is astronomical. What world do we live in? Are we in some weird ass matrix? Are we in a weird ass matrix? I must say we have because how and how in the hell are we as a society paying quarterbacks, football players, a hundred million, a half a billion dollars a year to play football in what functional society is that? Is that rational? Is uh, 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 I mean, I, 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 that the numbers and the logic crack and I love football just like anybody else but my goodness we got a half a billion dollar quarterback in Mahomes we got a quarter of a million dollar quarterback in Watson and then we got a 160 million dollar quarterback and and Prescott and all of which are black by the way so with that being said it is absolutely amazing that a football player in today's game 
could make a half a billion dollars playing a children's game. I just for a brief second, I was pulled away from the football reality into another reality. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the hell is that? Is that functional? How as a society, anyway, that's, I just, that's subject for another show, but the deal, which is technically for six years, but voids after four. So it helps Dallas against the salary cap could be worth 164 million. It doesn't matter because he got 126 of it guaranteed. Now his signing bonus was 66 million. You hear me? It's 66. He got $66 million. That's a weird number, by the way. He got $66 million, by the way, to put his giant Hancock on that piece of paper. Just to sign the deal that guarantees in 126. Absolutely amazing. The first three years of the deal average at 42 million per year. So he got the 40 plus that he wanted. But you know what's great about it, though, if you take a look and you think about some of the things that deal with it is the fact that the man suffered. He had his basically his leg turned the wrong way. He had to go through surgery and then looked like his 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 time was over with. But then he stayed to it, rehab, and he got the deal anyway. So if anything we learn from this lesson is that never give up. If you want something, never give up until you get it. Until you get it. That's what this that's how the people win constantly over and over again. Never give up. Hold to what you hold. Hold on to what you believe in. And keep working and you're gonna get it. And that's a testament of anything we can take from Dak Prescott's contract. So let's rehab. Uh, Saints uh, seek to extend contracts and Marshawn Lattimore. We covered that. And Ryan Ramchek, we covered that earlier. We also covered the report that Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray, among Saints available for trades. Now, I uh, expect that list to grow as we keep moving into uh, into the um, into the offseason. Now, granted, let's say they restructure a trade, Teron Armstead, because Teron Armstead could be a guy that could be on the trading block. And if they trade Teron Armstead, I'm telling you what the Saints going to do. They're going to pay Ryan Ramchek. If they trade or release Armstead, they move Ramchek to the left tackle, blindside tackle, and then they take Andrews Pete and put him at right tackle. That's, that's their plan, and then they're then going to draft the guard to go there where Pete was. I'm telling you, because that that's why they gave him the money. I told people that when they paid him that a couple of years ago, when they played, paid Ryan Ramchek, I mean, uh, Andrews Pete, that money, that they paid him knowing that he was a versatile set that once Teron Armstead go, they're going to shift him to right tackle. Right at when Armstead goes to get ready to go, watch Pete shifts the right tackle. I'm telling you, just like I told you that Ram check is going to be the new blindside tackle after the payday. When Teron leaves, either this year or next year, Andrews Pete will shift to the right tackle position. And then the Saints will simply fill in the middle and find a left guard somewhere, whether they go in the free agency or they go to the draft. I'm telling you, watch. They don't just pay a guy 50 something million dollars like that just to play guard. I'm telling you, he's a guy that was originally drafted to play the tackle position. So just, just giving you that to think on. And, of course, we talked about this article, which which is for Saints extension candidates. We talked about Teron Armstead, among others. And, of course, we covered the franchise tag pending agents. We covered it and why it's feasible and not feasible to look at that. And, of course, the last thing was, of course, the monstrous deal that was played to Dak Prescott. Uh, four years at 160, 126 million of it is guaranteed with a signing bonus of 66 million. My goodness gracious. My goodness gracious. You're talking about astronomical cake, astronomical in so many ways. Big ups to the family. We appreciate y'all for chiming in on this thing. Uh, please, uh, if you hadn't hit the like button, please feel free to hit upon the like button in this one. As we covered the latest news of the day, big ups to the family members. Now, I do have, I'm going to be with y'all guys just over an hour, and it's about seven minutes till. So if you got any questions, please feel free to drop your questions or comments in the chat right about now, and I'll make sure I'll get to them. I'll make sure I get to them. So big ups to the rest of the family members in the building. What's up, Willie? Big ups to Willie. Willie in the building as well. What Willie say? Say hey to Jerry Jones. Muscle listening to the show the other day. They finally paid Dakota Prescott. <laughs> yeah, they gave him his dose, so there it is. All right, who else? Big ups to the rest of the family members chiming in this thing. Too much love to you guys. Appreciate y'all for being in the live stream. Who else I'm going to give a shout out to? I thought I'd seen a few more family members I ain't, you know, give a shout out to. All right. All right. Revolt says Armstead ain't going nowhere. Q, stop it. I'm just saying, bro, it ain't impossible. Armstead, listen, you either get rid of his ass this year or next year. What's the point of holding on to him, bro? He got what? Armstead, you can get value for Armstead this year. 
better this year than next year because he's a old, he's a year older next year, and you're not going to resign Armstead next year. So why not get rid of him? And remember, the article ca- cautioned you to say that Latavius Murray, Emmanuel Sanders, Malcolm Brown, and other Saints are going to be on the trade block. Now, if you don't get these guys traded by a certain period of time, the Saints are simply going to release them. You know, and like I said, if you're going to make a move on Teron Armstead, why not make it when Drew's gone, when Armstead's gone? Armstead's all a part of that movement. So we'll see who's right in the end. We'll see. All right, Revolt. Revolt said he don't think he's going nowhere. DLP said if the Saints can get draft picks back for a few of these veterans, this will help us out for the next few years. Troy Thompson, what's up, Troy? Who that to you? All right. Who else we got chiming in? Jonathan Wilson. What's up, Jonathan? Big ups to you as well. All right. Big ups to the rest of the family members. Who else we got? DLP said, yeah, Lattimore is very up and down, man. Willie says, Lattimore is a millennial clown. The guy can't focus for five plays in a row. Willie got ADHD and needs some Ritalin or Prozac. I got you on that. Hi, Boost says, what if we lose Williams? Then what? There's nothing behind him on the depth chart. Draft the safety in the second. Or the first, or the second, or see if you can find one. You can't afford to pay the man. What you going to pay him with? Candy balls and, and trash bags? What you going to pay him with? You can't pay all of them right now. They just too flush up against the, the cap, thanks to the C-19 madness. You know, you're going to pay Lattimore. You're going to pay Ramchek. And you're going to pay Marcus Williams, too? 12 to 30. And Williams is not in family. Listen about this Marcus Williams thing. Williams is not going to take a pay cut to stay with the Saints. He's not. That's why he got a, he fired his agent last year. Got a whole nother agent. When guys fire their agents, they looking for paydays. You know, Williams says he wants, and it's been quoted and it's out there, that he wants top pay of the market. He wants 12. He wants north of 13 million a season. You think the Saints going to pay Marcus Williams 14 million a season? I mean, I just don't see that happening, fam. I'm sorry to tell you that. And I know we got some lovers of Marcus Williams, and I got love for Marcus Williams. But economically speaking, it's not feasible to sign Marcus Williams if you're going to sign all those other dudes. I mean, where are you going to get the cake from to sign him for? It's my, it's my question. He would have to take somewhat of a deal to, to stay here, right? I just don't see that occurring. How about say, what if we, okay, thank you for asking. But yeah, safety, you going, you're trading veterans for safeties, bro. I mean, for uh, draft picks, excuse me. You're trading, you're trading veteran players. Look who's on the trade block right now. You have... Malcolm Brown. You got now on the uh, Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray. These are very capable Saints veterans that can help a team win. The, what are the Saints going to get back for an Emmanuel Sanders, a Latavius Murray, or Malcolm Brown? Draft picks. Why are you trading veterans, established veterans, for draft picks? Because they simply don't have the money to retool the team the way it is because. They Super Bowl and busted. Super Bowl and busted mean you can't keep the same players that you had before. That's the reality of this thing. You, we ended up on the wrong side of the formula is what I'm trying to say. By no fault of you, me, or any of the great same think tank. We ended up on the wrong side. We were supposed to be Super Bowl, not bust. We busted. So as a busted result, you got to bust this team up to a degree. And the Saints are going to keep some of the core members of the team. But some of these guys, the role players that really helped out, like Emmanuel, Latavis, Malcolm Brown, and guys like that, they're going to go. And Marcus Williams, Trey Henderson, guys like that, Sheldon Rankins, you're not going to be able to keep these guys on the team. That's just the reality. Now, would, would I be upset if they signed them or they franchise tagged them? They could franchise tag them and try to put the tag on them, but what sense it make to tag a man for one year for 11 to 12 million and have 12 million hit for one year on the contract on your salary cap and you trying to get all the numbers down? It's not feasible for you to even tag them. It don't make sense to tag them. That's why I was showing people the article that people say, well, tag them, Q, tag them for what, 12 million, 11 million? The tag going to be around 11 to 12 million. So you're going to hold Marcus Williams for one year for 12 million on your cap because you can't go into the draft and find a safety or go into free agency and sign a cheaper replacement. I mean, Marcus Williams is not a pro bowler. Why we got to hold on to him like that? You know, he's not a pro bowler. I mean, it's like, okay, we like Marcus Williams and it's a sentimental attachment. I understand that, but please. I mean, he he's he's a good dude and all that, but I think we can do better than Marcus Williams, especially for the kind of money that he's going to be asking for. Marcus Williams, let me say it again, 
Marcus Williams is not going to give your ass a discount. He wants 14, 13, 14 million a season. Or do you have the money to give him? I do not think you do. And you will not. And it'll be dumb and economically irresponsible for you to try to sign him on a tag for one year and put $12 million on your cap for one year to hold on to Marcus Williams. When you could take one of the picks you're going to get for the veterans that you're trying to trade and end up getting a player. I'm just saying. But hey, we like I said, the Saints make ridiculous moves before. Maybe they'll keep them. I don't know. We'll see how it plays, man. Franchise tag is a dumbass move if you're trying to clear cap is all I'm saying. It's a dumb move if you're trying to clear cap. You get you got players on the cap that you're trying to get rid of. You still 40 plus million. You're going to hold a man for 11 million. You got two guys and Ramcheck and Lattimore that's, that's 10 million and 11 million. And you're going to turn around and tag a guy for 11 million because you can't find a replacement. I just don't think that's feasible. But then again, we do do a lot of silly shit. So my, this might be one of the things that we do because they did say we want them back. We'll see. Although I think that really the, the, the attention that they're giving Marcus Williams should be given to Jameis Winston. That's who you should be focusing on because the reality is you need a quarterback more than you need a damn safety, especially one like Marcus Williams. We can go and find a safety, but you need a quarterback. You need somebody to sit on top of this team. You need, we need to focus on getting Jameis back and forget all this stuff about Marcus Williams when there's no tackling ass. I'm just trying to keep it real. All right, big ups to the rest of the family members in there. Bishop, one love. What's up, Bishop? Big ups to you. Good to see Brandon said they probably just restructure a lot of the contracts or something. They're going to do all that. Rose says Breeze stayed too long, should have had at least two more Super Bowls. Then the Saints had to start over. It would not have been that bad. But you remember, that's not just up to Breeze. The coach could say, listen, the coach got to have a vision too now. The coach says Jay or Nate to players that play on this team. The coach could have told Drew, listen, our game plan, Drew, we thank you. Go ahead on and go talk about the football. You know, go ahead on about your business. He could have did him that. But instead, he said, no, come on back and begged him last year when he was going to NBC to be an analyst. Drew Payton begged him back and he begging him back now. So, I mean, what can I tell you? Then, of course, you mean to tell me it's feasible? It's, let me you tell you these. It's just it's just crazy. They're going to sit here and a lot of the Saints uh, uh, brass are going to sit here and say it's economically and intelligent football, high IQ to bring Drew Brees back on a team where you've given up all of his key weapons. You've given up Emmanuel Sanders. You've given up uh, Latavius Murray. You've given up uh, players on defense that can help the team. And you gonna and this team is, is going to be significantly less talented than the team that he chaired a year ago. And you're going to put Drew Brees at, by, o- over the head of that team? You know, if you get rid of Morstead, you get rid of uh, some of the players, Malcolm Brown, and you got Sheldon Rankins and guys like that heading out. You know, why would you not start with the quarter? I mean, it's just. It's just, man, I don't I don't know if we got a vision here. I don't know if we got a vision on what we're going to do. It don't make any sense because the movements are almost like it's like, OK, we got a new quarterback. But if you bring an old quarterback, Drew, and set him on top of the team. You know, sometimes we got to know when to say no, man. All right. Uh, Kenny said you definitely look at, uh, def- he said you definitely don't look at 41. Uh, let's see. John says, who that? Jerome says they need to be like Earl Thomas. Uh, DLP says, Big Q, you might know this. The Saints can franchise them for 10 million, which is cheap for today's safety. I don't know if it's 10 million. If it's 10 million DLP, I mean, it's supposed to be, uh, it might be 11 or 12. But they can franchise tag them for 10. But wouldn't that be irresponsible? You trying to knock off money from the cap and you're going to hold them for 10? Do we really need Marcus Williams that bad where we got to tag him for 10? Do we really? Do, I mean, seriously, think about what I'm asking. Do we, we make, we having growing pains all over the team right now. All over the team. Do we really need Marcus Williams that bad? We got a franchise to mag for $10 million. And remember, you can't rework no franchise tag. Once you say 11, and I don't think it's 10, I think it's closer to 11 or 12. Either way, if you put 11 now, you know you can't restructure that, right? That means that 11 is due on this current cap, the same cap that you're trying to get underneath. I just don't see his value. People valuing him a lot more than I am, obviously. Because I'm saying to myself, we need to go somewhere else. And I'm like, man, damn, man. Because it keeps happening. Like, okay, Drew Brees, the vision of Drew. Drew's a Hall of Famer. 
I think his, his best years are behind him. If he couldn't do it with last year's team, odds are he's probably not going to be able to do it with this year's team. He probably not. So with that being said, the, the era of Saints football needs to move into the future. We have to have a vision on who the quarterback going to be. And I think too much attention is being put on Marcus Williams as opposed to Jameis Winston. I would rather put all that attention on Jameis Winston because you can find a very good safety in the draft. You're going to have a, a bunch of draft picks that you're going to draft to be on this team that's going to play pivotal roles anyway. Sooner or later, you're going to have to put the, the defensive backs together. How long do you think Malcolm Jenkins is going to play after this year? After next year, after next year, I guarantee they're going to be trying to get rid of Jenkins too in his second year. He's got a four-year deal. After two years, the Saints have an opt-out after the second year. See, I'm just trying to say that from a vision standpoint, they stop piling picks for a reason. They can't pay the veteran guys the money that they want. So if you use, you're trading vets for picks, then <laughs> what's that telling you? Picks, The picks are cheaper than the players in free agency that we need to go after. So if that's the case, then we drafting the guys either through the draft or undrafted market. $10 million for Marcus Williams on a team where we trying to get below the cap, that's too much. I just think that's financially irresponsible. That's my take on it. Y'all might disagree, but, you know, that's my goddamn take on it. Bishop says, uh, Willie, you right. We said uh, what you said, Drew sold us out for too long. I don't know if he I, – I can't agree about Drew sold us out, bro. I don't know. Drew Brees has been mediocre in the playoffs. That is very true. He has been a mediocre-ass quarterback in the playoffs. And at many times I often said that we needed to have more of a balanced approach. But God damn it, Drew Brees and Sean Payton was doing that shit together. Sean Payton could easily stop. Drew Brees took the ball out of his hands and started running the ball. He refused it. He gave, he let him have it. And that's and I'm saying accountability. I just wish, man, really, that we start pounding on Sean Payton like we pound on the players. We pound on the players. But we got to pound on the coach doubly harder than we pound on the players because the damn coach, the one responsible for everything that goes on the field. He decides who gets what time, when time, what player, where player, how player. He decides all that. It's his game plan. You know, and I'm not disagreeing with y'all saying I'm just we need more emphasis on that because that's at the genesis point. That's the zero jump reference for all things that start from football on this team is Sean Payton. He's the guy that says Drew Brees didn't see Drew out there struggling in the Minnesota game of of two years ago. Didn't see Drew struggling in the San, in the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers this past season. If you see him struggling, help him take the ball out of his hands by running the ball. Put some taste, throw taste him in there in the Wildcats. Do some Wildcatting with Elvin Kamara. Do something. Just don't watch him disintegrate. You know, if you see Jared Cook out there, alligator arm in the ball fumbling the ball and all this kind of stuff, please take him out because he's not prepared to play. He's not. He's not. And if guys are missing tackles and they're out there missing tackles and they don't have the game plan, pull their ass out of there. You got the right to do that. You don't do that. They're going to end up hurting you like Cook hurt us in the game last year. You know, it's just, I, I just, I'm just, I'm a common sense dude, man. I don't, it, I don't, I don't have to take all this end around shit just to get to the point. I go right to the meat of the matter. And I say, listen, the coach is at the top of the team. The coach sees something wrong. He has the power to pull that player out of the game. He does. And also, if you're paying attention to the players, you can see who's prepared and who's not prepared to play. And if a guy is not prepared to play, get him out of there before he screw up the game for the rest of the ones that are. I mean, that's just common sense. What do y'all think? Is that common sense? Michael, big up C says, um, number 47, not 60. Look at Sport Track. Uh, John says, uh, let's see, DLP says, yeah, they can sure... Got to be the right guy. As mentioned earlier, this guy, Galipsy from Missouri, is a free safety that's a hitter and plays like there are a lot of safeties in the draft, man. There are a lot of safeties, man. We can do better than Marcus Williams. I'm telling you, we can. I know it's hard for some people that to believe about it because they love Marcus Williams so much, but I'm telling you, they are players that we can draft, that we can develop, that can do better than what Marcus Williams did in the four years that he was a New Orleans Saint. 14 million and you're talking about franchise tagging them for 12. It's not feasible. Remember, you're still $46 million under the cap. And you talk about franchise and tag franchise tag should not be an option for you right now. It should not be an option. You shouldn't be even thinking about franchise tag. Realistically speaking, 
You know, it's it, we shouldn't even be thinking about that, to be honest with you, because you're still almost 50 million dollars underneath the cap, you know. And then how much money you think you're going to clear when you get from and see, I'm trying to get people to understand you're 40, you're almost 50 million dollars under the cap. And then when you finally get to zero, zero on the cap, you thinking they're going to free up 15 million dollars and turn 10 over it up to 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 Williams. Oh, come on. Uh, huh? Seriously, think of how much money you think you're going to have once you clear that 46 million. Tell me and to put that in them in the chat. Put that in the chat because I'm trying to find out what y'all seeing that I'm not seeing here. Tell me how much money that the Saints are going to have after they get from $50 million underneath the cap. How much money are they going to have? They're not going to have $30 million to go and put $10 million or $12 million on Marcus Williams. Come on now. And remember, I keep telling you, once you tag somebody, the $10 million is what you owe them. You can't restructure that into next year. You got to pay them that ten on this cap. So if you freed up $12 million or $15 million of the cap, you're going to give 10 or 12 of it to Marcus? And what about the draft picks you're going to sign? What about everybody else that you need, to cheap veterans or what have you? I'm just saying, how much is it going to be? Devin, Devin says $12 million. We, it, it, I'm saying it's not feasible. I mean, come on. It's not feasible. We all know how to balance our uh, – we all got ba uh, budgets for our houses. We know how to balance our checkbooks. We know how to balance our home. And there's no way. Where are you going to get the money to pay that guy? It's just not feasible. It's just smarter and more productive. It makes more economic sense as you just go and draft somebody. We cannot pay $10 million, $12 million for Marcus Williams on, a, on the tag. We can't. We can't pay him $12, $13, $14 $13, million straight up for this year, period. Even if you give him a contract with step pyramids in it, that's still not feasible because you're still committing more than what you should be committing to a player and you're acting like he Ronnie Lott or somebody. I mean, I would pay that for Ronnie Lott, but that guy not Ronnie Lott. That, that, you know what his name is? He's not Ronnie Lott. He's Ronnie Not. That's what the hell his name is. His name is Ronnie Not. He is not Ronnie Not. He can't tackle. He said, we've got 13 interceptions, Q. 13 interceptions. What is that? Three interceptions a year? Three For four years, it's three interceptions a year? And I'm supposed to be going, oh, shit, bro, oh, 13 interceptions. 13 interceptions over four years, is that good? Think about what I'm saying and then go look at the rest of the players who balling out there and look at their interception ratio. Now, that's more than Buda Baker, but Buda Baker didn't play that position, that free safety role or that range, that strong safety role where he out there spawn, spawning an aisle like a satellite. Just barely last year, in the middle of the year, the light went on for Marcus Williams to start playing like somebody. But prior to that, before the Chicago game, he was getting turned around like a rotisserie, like a chicken on a rotisserie stick. So, I mean, listen, I don't want to see Marcus Williams' ass up there whiffing and blowing up tack and missing shit. I'm sorry, I don't. And I don't want to pay him $10 million to do it. I'm sorry. I, I'm just, I got a soft spot for that type of shit. I don't want to see it. I'm sorry. I don't want to see Marcus Williams nine tackling ass running around there paying him 10 or 12 million dollars whiffing on players i'm sorry i don't want to see that and i know chris richard could probably help him a little bit but how much of the goddamn whiffery you think they're gonna take out of marcus williams next year i mean this year come on now 10 or 12 million that's too much money for marcus williams man we 50 million dollars under the cap there is no way that we got we got to get to zero first fam and then we got to go up to 15 million dollars and we'd be lucky if we can get 16 or 17 million ain't no way in the world i'm telling turning 10 of it over to marcus williams when i got draft picks and everybody ain't no damn way in the world i still gotta sign Jameis. where i'm gonna get the money from to sign Jameis winston i mean don't we want Jameis? where are we gonna get the money to sign Jameis if we giving it to marcus williams we can't have them all we can't have them all this year. You're going to have to make a decision. It's going to be Jameis or it's going to be Marcus. It can't be everybody because you're paying Lattimore, you're playing Ram check. You can't pay everybody because you're $50 million in the hole right now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Kenny says, wonder what kind of deal we would have to give. Ja I'm saying, bro, that is what we need to be looking at, the Jameis move, right? Jameis is the deal you need to be looking at. It is not the Marcus Williams deal. The Marcus Williams deal is not the deal we want. I do not want to see Marcus. I would rather have Jameis here than Marcus Williams. I'm just going to keep it real. We can find a safety in the draft. We can. I promise you that. You won't be upset. I promise you. I, at least you will get rid of all the whiffery 
that you've been seeing, scared to blow quarterbacks up on the goal line, grabbing motherfuckers face mask and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about that going on. You don't have to worry about that. Ten million a year. I mean, I'm just saying, fam, at the end of the day, man, I just don't want to see that, man. I don't want to see it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got I was pissed off last year watching him up uh, doing what he doing. I'm like, how has Marcus Williams been here for six, 40, four, four years under the same guy? Thank you, Mark. Appreciate you. Say we can have the great same thing tank. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Morgan. Appreciate the super chat. But all I'm saying at the end of the day is Marcus Williams is not the dude y'all thinking he is, man. I, I'm sorry to tell you that. He not the dude. He not, I'm not giving him shit at 10, 12 million. I'll give you the hell with that. I'll give it to Jameis before I give it to Marcus Williams, nine tackling ass. And I like Marcus Williams, but he the wrong type of dude for here. He, you can't have a nine tackling safety as the last line of defense. Do you not understand how ridiculous that is? The guy should be the, the safety. The, the safety should be the, that safety, the person that he plays should be the best tackler on the team or either the top three. But the guy is not a very good tackle, and he's your line, last line of defense. That means if he makes a wrong judgment call or misses the tackle, that means it's a touchdown. Did you remember the games before the Tampa Bay Buccaneer games when people was getting behind Marcus Williams because he was misreading plays in the fourth year? It was only after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game that the light went on. You know why? Because that's when Malcolm Jenkins went back there and he didn't have to cover the tight ends no more. Remember, the Saints made the trade to get Quan Alexander. Even though Quan didn't start against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that was still Alex Anzalone. But the next game after that, Quan played and played really well. That allowed Jenkins to go back to where he was and instruct Mal Malcolm, I mean Marcus Williams from where he was and to help him back there. But when you left him back there early in the year, he was getting cooked and baked and turned around like he was on a rotisserie stick. Y'all know that and I know it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to be one. See, them writers, you got to fault a lot of these writers for that because they be blowing all this bullshit smoke. And I don't know if they, they getting the agents paying them to cook up these garbage articles. Talking about he was a pro bowl safe. That's bull crap. Ma, I studied Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams should have been a pro bowl safety in year three. He's played 60 games for the Saints. He's been starting since he was drafted in the second round out of Utah. When he came here, he's been starting ever since. He's been in the same coaching staff for four years. He had the same coaches, same game plan every year and still whiffing his ass off. Then last year, he finally showed something, and then people said, let's crown him with a $12 million contract. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. I'm not falling for that. Absolutely not. I'm passionate about it because I'm tired of getting, I'm tired of seeing him getting smoked out there. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just tired of it. Elmo says, uh, Marcus, Minnesota. It's, you know what? I'm not even thinking about the miracle, Elmo. That's not even what I'm, I'm not even thinking about the miracle, bro. I've given up on that. And I'm not even thinking about the George Kittle face mask that he did. Not even that. It's all the other whifferies. The all the, and then last year, the fourth year, and the same defense, he was struggling his ass off. Not just him, but the entire secondary was struggling in, uh, in the games leading up to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when the switch went on, then everything synced. But if you go back and watch the tape, go back and watch the tape when Jenkins was playing a tight end and they had to leave Marcus Williams back there to check the backfield. Watch watch the plays, what was going on, how Williams was getting smoked and cooked back there and, and reading the wrong plays. That's too old for a player that's been here for four years. You should know better than that. So I'm saying, why the light didn't go on there? Why? I'm, don't ask yourself that. Why didn't the light go on? No, he had more consistency than anybody. There was no coaching changes in the defensive backfield. Aaron Glenn was there when he got here. He was there for four years. They never changed nothing. Dennis Allen, Aaron Glenn, all of them, the same coaches he had year after year and still couldn't get to a Pro Bowl. Ask yourself why. Marcus Williams might have some people fooled, and I like Marcus Williams a lot but he's not worthy of no 12, 13, 14 million dollars. You let the Cowboys get him, you let the the Lions get him, you let somebody else get him, but he ain't worth he ain't worth no 10, 12 million in my book, Jack. Let me keep it moving here. I'm already smoke goose messing around with with uh Ronnie not over there, man. Ronnie not. Ronnie not. Regulation says uh calm down, homie. If he doesn't come right, I'm sure he'll send them packing. It's cool, Q. <laughs> Regulation Rick, thank you for that. Who that to you, brother? I'm just passionate, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel I'm just you, you know what, bro? 
I got upset. What's up, Val? Big ups to you. Said we need another 42 at safety. Yep, yep. Without all, all, all without all of the off-field nonsense, you're absolutely right. But the reality is why I'm upset is because, bro, think about it like this. You know, when I, you know, when I think about Marcus Williams, the game tape rolls in my mind. Remember? Because, you know, I watch all of these games at least three times. OK, I don't just watch the games once. I watch each game at least three times, each Saints game at least three times. And each time I watch it, I miss something that I didn't see in the first one. I watch every Saints game at least three times. And then, you know, I watch it and then I, you know, look at the players, say, listen, what I seen was this. That's why I seen Alex Anzalone wasn't no good early on in the year. And I was saying he tiptoeing through the tulips. I could say I was saying that because I watch each game three times. And when you cover and watch the Saints and do all these type of reports as much as I do, a lot of the stuff that, you know, that you might miss, you know, I'll be, you know, people might miss, I'll catch it. You know, even like the interviews, when he'll be doing an interview talking to somebody, and then I'll cover it like we did on TSC QA Live. And then he's saying that football is in his first love, it's just something that he does. How many people knew that? We covered it on TSC Q&A Live when he said that football isn't just something that I do. You know, it's just a, thank you, Dada. Dada says Peyton and Mickey love those William boys. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. P.J. Williams and Marcus Williams. He loves them two dudes. Oh, my goodness. The rotisserie boys. Oh, my goodness. You see them suckers at the rotisserie rack at your nearest Winn-Dixie. They just sit up there together, one on top, one at the bottom, turning over like this. <laughs> oh, that go Marcus Williams at the top. That go uh, uh, P.J. Williams. And P.J. Williams, the biggest of the, of the rotisserie. He sit at the bottom, turning slow. I mean, they both on the rotisserie rack. Both of them. Thank you, daughter. But I'm just saying, bro, that's what I, when I talk about Marcus Williams and I be talking about Williams, Bro, I swear to y'all, when I'm talking about him, the footage be flashing in my mind and I see him whiffing in my mind as I'm, that's why I be getting kind of a little frustrated because I be talking about him and what he's doing in the, in the footage of his mistakes that I've watched over the year, because I got a good memory. A lot of stuff sticks to me pretty well. Then I'll be watching as I'm talking, I'm looking at it and I'm kind of telling y'all what I'm seeing in my mind, describing it in my animated fashion. You know what I'm saying? But that's just my perspective, just to let you know. But I appreciate you uh, letting me know that uh, regulation. Yeah, I say Rick says three times too. Good, Rick. You're, you're a student of the game, brother. All right, Trail. What's up, Trail? Terrence, what's up? Who that family He says, uh, we really need to go. If it wasn't Jenkins, we would have no safety help. We can find, bro. Yeah, I know. We got to find somebody. We got to find somebody, fam. Smallville, what's up, fam? Uh, good to see you in the chat. Josh, what's up, Josh? <laughs> Aaron, what's up, Jay? I'm telling you, man. What's up, Kenyatta? Big ups. What's up, Aaron? And don't y'all see it too? You got the Williams boys, PJ up here. You know, you go to the store. I know it's our grocery stores is Win Dixie, Rouses, and stuff like that down there. Y'all probably is Publix and and all them kind of stores, wherever, depending on where you are. And you go up into the deli section, not the deli. What is it, the deli? Yeah, the section where they have the cooked food. Guys might be taking lunch and they go in there to go get them a plate or something. And then you see the rotisserie rack sitting in the middle there. And they got the chicken turning slow like that. That's P.J. Williams. Uh, Marcus, P.J. is at the top. He the biggest chicken up there. He turning turning slowly like that. And at the bottom is, is Marcus Williams. I mean, they just get turned around all kind of ways. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. The rotisserie boys, man. I tell you what, man. That's right, Devin. Seafood City. That's right. Seafood City. All right. Yeah, but that's that's my take on it, family. Listen. Uh, Bromod. Okay, Space Ghost says Bromod. All right. <laughs> All right, Bromod. Where you at in Kennel, bro? <laughs> What's up, Tasha? She says, Q, say no more. I'm calling Mr. Jerry Jones and asking for a loan for my Saints family. Don't need to thank me. We found it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tasha. I doubt he'd give it. You say, well, what this loan for? Is it to help out the say? Oh, no. Hell no. We ain't going to do that. I just spent 126 guaranteed million on Dak and gave him 66 million on the, on the signing bonus. Hell no. I ain't giving the Saints no money. All right. I ain't mad at Jerry. I wouldn't do it either. 
Ramsey, what's up, Ramsey? Says Q, hopefully Marcus stays in the South, then he can have all his mistakes actually help. The cold-blooded part is, if he go, let's say, in certain areas, he could probably work for teams. Like, if he goes to the Detroit Lions, he might actually, a change of scenery might actually be beneficial for Marcus Williams, you know? And like I said, it's just my main beef with Marcus Williams is I think somewhere mentally something missing. And I ain't saying he got a screw loose. I'm not saying he a six pan, uh, six can, sh uh, uh, what? What I, how I says a one can short of a six pack. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that for whatever reason, the light hadn't gone on like it was supposed to. And he had 60 games, a lot of experience to get that light on. And it never came on despite all the consistency and the stableness that he had in his tenure here. You know, it's just ironic to me that that light didn't go on. And the other thing is simply, he cannot tackle. He can't tackle. And that's a main, that's why I have a main issue with Marcus Williams is his tackling. You cannot have a last line of defense safety, which Marcus is, who cannot tackle. That is a recipe for disaster. He misses a tackle. He takes a poorish angle like he's known to do. He takes poor angles all the time. You know, and he doesn't have really good closing speed either. So you would need him to really understand what he's doing back there. And then the fact that once he does that, he has to then learn how to tackle. And then he said at the start of this year, this past year, that I got to learn how to be a better tackler. And I've been saying that because the tape don't lie, bro. You put that tape on, you see who making the mistakes. You see what they doing. You, it don't lie. It don't, you, it tells the truth every time and no matter who watching it. You know, that's why I was like, oh, my goodness, we got to get this guy out of here, man. He can't tackle. And I was like, okay, we'll put him close to the line of scrimmage. What for? He can't tackle. <laughs> he can't tackle. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, we'll see. What's up, Val? Big ups to you. JT says, all those Breeze boys, and I'm talking about the Breeze of the last three years. Yeah. Yeah, I know, bro. Breeze is, Drew has been really collapsing in the playoffs the last several years, man. You know, if you go back and watch the footage, man, the playoff games. You know, it's almost like Peyton Manning is, you know, Peyton Manning, uh, he was the regular season all-star and then he'll go into the the postseason and just stink. He'd be really normal. You can't turn it up to that level. And Drew Brees, as great as he was, he just, the last several years was really, really not good football for him in the playoffs. You know, and that's why I was saying we, we, we leaned on a running game in a regular season and I was happy for that. We really did. You know, but in the postseason, we needed to lean on it a little bit more, too, and made some changes. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we could have went a little further if we'd done that. But, you know, that's revisionist history, right? All right, big ups to your Pelican says, Q, you need to put that on the shirt if you're not locked down, DB, rotisserie boy. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro, what y'all think. Y'all know that something going to get rotisserie. DLP said, yeah, he he isn't nuts like Chauncey Gardner Giants. Yeah, Chauncey Gordon Johnson is crazy, but he know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Chauncey's out of he 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 throw it off. Now Chauncey Gordon he throw it off. Marcus Williams is not throw it off like Chauncey Gordon Johnson. The only thing is Chauncey knows what he's doing on the field. He's an excellent open field tackler. He got a screw loose, but you know he knows how to play within the game, and he's a natural at it. Marcus Williams, just something missing there from Marcus besides the nine tackling ability. I hope he gets it better, man. I like Marcus, man. I really do. I just hope he gets that together. Willie says Williams gonna be the Hank the Hank C <laughs> saying Hank Seafood. <laughs> he played in the United States of America. All right. <laughs> Aaron says, I like Chauncey got that dog in him. Yeah, hopefully he's the safety. We it's yet to be determined, fam. KK says uh Drew Brees been pimping us since 2017. Yep. Muse says, uh <laughs> what she says, duck confet, egg rolls with lime honey, red. What you uh uh, uh mm, yeah, Muse, what are you saying there? Whatever you talking there, that sound real good right there. That sound like something that's on the uh, on the website there. Uh, home D, uh, I mean, uh, Home Bistro. You uh, you talking about Home Bistro there, Muse? I'm have to make me an order right there. Latasha said, Chauncey Gardner Johnson whips on tackles. He comes in too fast and doesn't bring them down well. You said Johnson, Chauncey Gard Gardner Johnson whips on tackles, Tasha? Hmm, I, I ain't seen too many whiffs on. I did see him come in and, and over and uh, over pursue guys at times. I didn't really see much whiffery out of Chauncey Gardner Johnson. But I, but you're all right. I did see him over pursue 
on some tackles, if if that's what you mean. I, I I'm not knowing him to see. I've seen him with, <clears throat> but uh, he's tend to be a little bit over aggressive. I agree with that. Swag said, I like crazy, crazy get the job done. Yeah, hey, crazy and smart. You know what I'm saying? That's Chauncey. Tasha says, uh, sounds good. Do you cook that? Yeah, I sound real good. Ram says, we need to find the next Sammy Knight, baby. Oh, how about that? If I could sit Ch- sit Marcus Williams down in the room, and I've said this before, and let him watch tape of Sammy Knight, because he has the side. He's 6'1", 200 and what? What's, what what uh, Marcus is? 210 or something? 215? He got good size. He just he just not a hitter like you would like him to be, man. It's a shame too, you know. It's he got the size, he just don't have the mentality for it. All oh, right, it says seems that the Saints Achilles Hill for years have been our secondary. No true lockdown safety to cornerback. Seth says most of the Marcus picks are over the top, but great underneath cover and decent safety can do that. Any decent safety, you're absolutely right, Seth. You go back, they had a couple of picks that Marcus did when he jumped in front of. A wide receivers because he read the ball with his eyes and the quarterback didn't see him. He just came over the top and got it. You're right on that. And a few of them he did really impress me with. But um, um, for whatever reason, I like 13 interceptions. I'm just not crazy about the number. It basically break down over the last four years. It's basically three interceptions a year. I'm not really crazy about three interceptions a year. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm thinking some of our most elite uh, defensive backs will have at least five or north of five interceptions a year, which could have been the case for our cornerbacks this year had they have not dropped at least four interceptions apiece, including Chauncey Gard, uh, not Chauncey Gard, Chauncey dropped a couple of them, but Jack Rabbit and Laddie Daddy dropped at least four or five apiece this past season. Think about that for a second, you know? We got to get better at that. So thank you for saying that, bro. Ram says, Q, which wide receiver would you like to see us get, uh, well, in the draft? I, I don't know, bro. It's tough to call it that way back there, you know, but I, like I've said before, I'm a big guy. I, li- I like uh, uh, Terrace Marshall Jr. I, I, I like Terrace Marshall. Six foot four, 220 plus, 215 ish, 215, 214, 40, high 40 time, runs every uh, route in the tree, great footwork, uh, goes up, get the ball, breakaway speed. That guy is would be a weapon, man. And I'm hearing people like Baltimore looking at him. If he falls to us, man, I would love to take that guy, man. I just think he would look real swell next to my, uh, Mike Thomas on one side, he on the other side. One six three or six four, the other guy six four, big targets, and one stretching the field. Mike, the, I mean, I would absolutely love that. Would love that. But I don't know if he'll be there at that stage. But if we don't get him, maybe in the second round, the Saints look at somebody. I don't know if the Florida wide receiver will be there, but they got several really good wide receivers, especially in the second and third days. A lot of really good wide receivers in this draft this year that the Saints, hopefully, they, you know, they might be able to look on. If you're getting ready, Emmanuel Sanders, you might be looking at a wide receiver. Who knows what Sean Payton's going to do, man? You know, his drafts aren't the same as common folk draft. You know, you'd be having, okay, we got a need here. Let's draft for the need. Payton be like, man, we got a need over there. But I tell you what, I'm going to draft this cornerback and turn him into a safety and play him over there. You know, I, I just don't. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be a laugh. This is gonna be a laugh and a half when the draft come up late April. I'm gonna be sitting up here saying I was watching the draft last year, and I said, "All right, man, we're gonna we about to get something. We about to get a defensive end. We about to get a linebacker. We about to get some help on the defense." And with this pick, with the no, whatever pick it was, the Saints pick Caesar Ruiz. And I'm like, who the hell is Caesar Ruiz? A center? Oh, my, this dude took a center. That, that's Sean Payton. That's Sean Payton. That is Sean Payton. That is Coach Payton for you right there. You never know what he's going to do. All right, we'll say every time Marcus Williams, P.J. Williams get burnt cute. Holla old. Yeah, bro, I was, man, them dudes terrible, man. Terrence says, I think Gardner is hell of a player. Would like to see him play safety. Yeah, I would like him to move to safety position as well. I don't know if the Saints do it, though, you know. Latasha said the other day, Janoris was our best. She is. I agree with you. That he's the best defensive back. And Johnson Lat- Johnson Lattimore gets burnt by, by nobody. Why was he but let him play Julio? <laughs> or Mike Evans. I remember when uh, D-Hop just uh, bullied. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, man, that's a tough cover. But if you are a $100 million cornerback, which Laddie Daddy wants to be, you're absolutely right, Latasha. He has to bring it just like he brings it against Mike Evans and like he brings it against Julio Jones. I mean, you got to play. If you're going to make $100 million a year or get that, and it seems like the Saints going to give him that kind of money or close to it, 
you're going to have to be up there. You're going to have to wake up and play like that every game. Question is, I, I put to the great Saint Thank Tank, if the Saints win, and it's not an if, but it's a win. When the Saints play Lattimore, let me ask you guys this, and Latasha included. How do you guys think Lattimore, when he gets the money, will respond? Will he respond and be the lockdown cornerback that we think he's to beat once he gets that big cake? What do you guys think? Put put in the chat what y'all guys think. Let me know. Say yes or no. What you guys think about that? Do you think the, the money will force him to put his game up to another level that we haven't seen? Remember, he's a 25-year-old cornerback that's been to the Pro Bowl three times. But do we have we have we yet to see the very best of Laddie Daddy? And when he gets paid that money, do you guys think that that'll force him to the elite level where he's supposed to be? What do you guys think? Let me know. Put that in the chat. All right. Pelican says, Big Q, how many touchdowns Marcus Williams gave up in four? I don't know. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I would have to sit down and think about that one. But man, you there was a bunch of them. I'm telling it was a bunch of them that he gave up. And in four years, I could tell you at least 10, at least double digits, at least 10 that I can right now I'm working over in my head right now, at least 10 that he gave up in his four year career here, at least 10 of them. So, you know, just not knowing what to do. You know what I'm saying? Of well, course, you look at the the Minnesota miracle for the Vikings that was one he gave up for a touchdown there was several more that year the pro next year was several more that year uh and then he of course the ones that he didn't give up like the, the the 49ers game he helped him get down the field with walk the man down for 10 yards straight holding his face mask forcing the referee to throw the flag 15 yards to one of the best kickers in the league kick the game kick you right into a loss I mean it was at least 10 that I can just just glance off for just straight up you know I mean, but, you know, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if the Saints did sign him back, man, because, you know, Coach Payton is like that, man. He's just going to do it. All right, JT said, I love the undrafted guys. Thank you, JT. Much love, fam. Thank you, Mr. Fire D says, uh, uh, gave me, okay, thank you for the super sticker, fam. <laughs> Get a cup of coffee. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chats and the cash apps, family. I appreciate y'all. And I appreciate y'all really do for the, for the great love there. Latosh says, I'll Peyton the kind of guy that draft left left offensive tackle and put him at the note. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Tasha says, uh, when you come to Houston, all oh, right, see the see the ladies, the ladies, uh, uh far, farming bonds. Isn't that beautiful, man? The sisters and the, the ladies of the Great Saint Think Tank are farming bonds. That's what it's all about, man. All right, Carlton says he's gonna get draft another guard. <laughs> You're probably right, Carlton. Brandon says, I wish we can go get Patrick Peterson. Or Earl Thomas. What's up, Big Smoke? He says, I want Ingram back on the team. Mm, you might be interesting. You're looking to trade Latavius Murray. Is Ingram a player? I don't know, bro. You know, I don't know. All right. Uh, he says, I think it would be the same. Okay. Okay. KK504 and 404 lady says, nope. All right. Brandon says, I wouldn't mind if we got him back. All right. Carl said, I think he would be the same. Brandon says, most football players don't play the same once they get the big contract. Great point, Brandon. Pelicans Nola says, hell no. Swag fan says, no. Now go get Big Earl Thomas. <laughs> All right. Pelicans Nola says, hell no. Swag fan says, no. Uh, Kenyatta says, no. Latasha says, nah, he's too inconsistent. That was his thing in college, too. Lattimore has potential. But at times, he gets cocky and think he's the best D. I'm laddie, daddy. I'm the best. On the field, when he's a 30-year-old player. When he, oh, yeah, that's true, Tasha. He does have those issues and he said that himself so great observation on that dlp says Lattimore just hasn't stepped up uh to me for the amount of money i'm scared he might get they're gonna pay him bro i'm sorry to tell you that but they will pay him the money i'm just gonna tell you straight up what's up jamie big ups to you kk says uh got a lot of paper for the answer on marcus williams all right uh anthony says just look at von miller all right willie says when Lattimore gets paid seafood city hanks cajun and some old Louisiana's eat. <laughs> uh, Reed Seafood, uh, 20, what was that one on Reed, Willie? Uh, Cajun Seafood. Uh, what was that one on Willie? Willie, what was that on, um, on Chef, bro? Past Reed. 24? 
I can't remember it, man. 24 C4. Nah, it was. Willie know what I'm talking about. You remember, it's the old the old McDonald's building on Reed. On uh, Chef Pass Reed. Going back toward Mark 7. Oh, man. We never closed. There you go. We never closed. That's what I was thinking about. I'm going back on that. All right. Okay. All right. What else we got there? Latimer was beat by guys I never even heard of. Thank you, DLP. Good point. Uh, Latasha says, yeah, but it's George Kittle Q. He's literally the best tight end in the entire NFL. I know Tasha, but he could have did something. Pull his pants down, trip him, do something. He grabbed a man face mask for 10 yards straight. You know, and he was standing in front of him. Could he at least brace himself up against him? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they at least slow him down, like kind of brace himself, you know, up against his chest until the rest of the teammates came and I mean, I mean, he could have did something. I wouldn't have pulled on the face mask for 10 yards. I would have tripped him, pulled his pants down or something. Do something. Don't grab it, you know. You know what I'm saying? Seth says, how about uh, the Nasir in the 6'4", 220 guy? Yeah, Kevin was telling me about that dude. Brandon says, one thing I noticed that once you give defensive back those big contracts, they seem to start. See, everybody's saying the same thing. Mr. Fire D said, for sure. All right, Lori. What's up, Lori? How you doing? Kevin says, if they let, what's up, Jim Kev? He says, if they let Murray go, I hope the Saints go and draft my little cousin out of Oklahoma, Ramondre Stevenson. Okay. KK says, Laddie will be the strip club. <laughs> oh, Devin says, he's going to make it rain, huh? Devin says, Laddie will tighten up second half of the season. All right. Uh, Anthony says, I hope Laddie steps up. I'm Laddie, Daddy. I'm the best. Like Elvin and MT did. Too bad MT was hurt last year. Yeah, hopefully better things. Uh, Laura says she wants uh, <laughs> she wants uh, a Russell Wilson. All right. Okay. Well, let's see how that happens. All right. Big ups to the fam. We never close. That's right, Willie. That's right. Big Low. What's up, uh, Big Low? He said, what y'all talking about? A little bit of everything, my brother. <laughs> yep. Bishop says, we never. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, 1825, two lane. That's right. Casting that seafood on Haynes. How about that, JT? Bringing it back. James says, if Sean Payton to keep Emmanuel Sanders a trade. He says, if I was Sean Payton to keep Emmanuel and trade Michael Thomas. Wow, says Jamie. Okay. Laura says, I want to draft another safety. Thank you, Laura. So Laura's not a, fa a fan of keeping Ema uh, uh, Marshawn, I mean, uh, Marcus Williams. I, I wouldn't, I'm not mad at it. Rams said, hey, Q, if Sean Payton would hold players accountable when they pay Lattimore, he would play better. Yeah, I know, bro, but you know, you know that. You know my spiel on that. Uh uh Kenny says, look like Marcus was scared to tackle Kittle. It did, bro. And he just just hit that that uh Minnesota miracle moment when things just went great. He just detached and he just did, he just grabbed on and latched on like a like a lobster. And you know what I'm saying? Like a lobster balling in the water. He just grabbed on and wouldn't let go. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I don't know. It's just that pressure moment, man. And you know, like it was times like it's just I seem like one of the moments I remember when uh, Adrian Peterson was playing. I think it was for the Lions. Remember, we played the Lions earlier this year and Adrian Peterson was playing and Marcus Williams went up too high. That's a, one thing about you got to know how to tackle guys. You never talk, tackle a big running back like Adrian Peterson around his shoulders or up high. That's a recipe for disaster. You just don't do that. If you're going to tackle a big guy like uh like Henry or a guy like Adrian Peterson, you got to go low and tackle these guys. You got to. And when Marcus Williams called himself, this is a goal line play now. Marcus Williams called himself trying to tackle Peterson up high. What did Peterson do? He pushed them all, mushed them all up out of the damn way. You know, and I was like, damn, Marcus, you're supposed to go. Come on, bro. He's, that was a goal line play. If you'd have tackled them right, we just kept them. You know, and that's the type of stuff, you know, we just have to, we have to get through. Uh, who that to you, fam? Good to see that. Who that? King Tosh says, all oh, Elf Kamar be pissing. <laughs> so rude to report. He got a little something. You know, since he, it's just like more and more of his little ways is coming out that I don't like, man. And, I, and I'll and i be quick to call that dude out here on the show. I really do. You know, I like what he do on the field. But some of these ways, man, it's like most of these little dudes, they ain't used to having no money. And money brings out a very negative and ugly quality. And you got to remember, some of these guys are real young. They're like 24 and 25, and they never had no money like that. They never had no money. So when they get that money, their mind is when I, you know, uh, you ain't, it's the Kanye West song. You can't tell me nothing. When I get my money right, you ain't going to tell me nothing. And that's how it is. 
And that shouldn't be the case. When you get money like that, you got to develop something. And really, it's not. It's really before you have the money, you got to have something in your heart and your soul that keeps you grounded. So when you get that money, it don't turn you to a jerk and a moron and the putts and a nincompoop and, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And he, just little ugly qualities I noticed about Elvin Kamara of uh, just this past season that I had noticed before. You know, like he was, I caught, I just busted his ass straight up lying about going, about being in the Saints facility. Remember that whole debacle? You know, I said, this dude straight up freaking lying. So the reporter asked him, Were you, so you was in the building? Yeah, I was in the building. So Coach Peyton lying? I don't know what he talking about, but I was in the building. Yeah, but you talking about you got epidermal shots. Remember he said that? He got epidermal shot. Oh, really? Where they do that at, bro? Huh? Where they do that at, bro? Where they do that at, Elvin? Huh? You got the epidermal? That's what happened? That's straight from them. I can't make this stuff up. Where they do that at? Make that make sense to me, family. What's going on over here? I know we living in some wild and wacky times, but y'all going to have to make that make sense to me. <laughs> Where they do that at? You know, so, I mean, it's just little ugly things that I know is by Elvin Kamara, man, that I really, you know, that I really don't like, you know? Remember, that? it's just really strange. All right, uh, you know, so let me see. Muse said, I don't think it's definitely going to come down to James or Russell. My vote is youth versus experience. Thank you, Muse. Real smart on that one as well. Brand said, at some point, I'm tired of celebrations from players, especially when you haven't got the job in the playoffs. All right, what's up, Uncle Pauly? Big Country said, I just want to know what 1825 Tulane means. It's a, uh, it's an old business from back in the day. They used to do an old commercial, uh, Rosenberg's Furniture. I think it's Rosenberg's. It's a 1825 too late. That was the address of Rosenberg's furniture. This is an old New Orleans business that had commercials ran for years and it was real popular on local television. So yeah, 1825 too late. That was the spill. The man's daughter sung the, the jingle for his, uh, and we talking about a business that was open since the sixties. They're defunct now. I think they shut down, uh, before Katrina or right before Katrina, somewhere along up in there. So, you know, but that's what that means. Uh, Terrence says, uh, Mar Marcus has not been the same since that Minnesota game. I know, bro. That's, that's, I'm kind of sad about that happening with him. Anthony says 18 million for 25 touchdowns. Just a guess. Paul says, Oh, are the saints getting Keenan Allen? for Lattimore. I don't know. Brandon says, maybe we can ship some gumbo and crawfish to Seattle for Wilson. <laughs> Latasha says, once I have this baby, I'm going to show Williams how to tackle. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's right. Teach him, Tasha. All right. Willis says, Elvin Kamara must have gotten pregnant. At <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to hear it. I don't hear it. You talking about, he said that. You remember that? Man, you can't make this shit up for nothing in the world, man. You can't make this up for nothing in the world. Where they do that at, Elvin? Huh? Why they giving a man epidermal shots at, Elvin? Make that make sense to me, Elvin. But just be lying his ass off. I busted him in several lies last year. Just lying. Just be lying. All right, Willis says, Elvin must have gotten that prank. Oh, my goodness. Big Low says, okay, thanks, Q. No problem, bro. Fire D Sam 50, fam, West Bank, Avondale. All right, Mr. Fire D. West Bank. All right. Best Bank. Vale. What's up, Vale? He said, yes, it's Rosenberg. See, the family know about old Rosenberg furniture. Hey, no swag fan says, man, this 90 proof hitting. I fire D just throw in the clause that we're talking about old stuff. Cause. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. So I mean, oh my goodness. My goodness. My goodness, I, I don't know what to say on that Elvin Kamara thing. Man, Uncle Paul says, hey, Q, he says, I got my Popeyes tonight. <laughs> Sway would be very happy. He has a lot of money invested in Popeyes. He got he got Popeyes stock, so he thanks you already. All right, what's up, D's, D's nuts? L, uh, what's up, bro? Pick up C, you say, LOL, Elvin. Didn't he say that, though? Man, where they do that at, Elvin? Huh? Where they do that at? I know you got long hair, but bro, where they do that at? You know, oh my goodness. No, no, bro. No, Elvin. You just could have said, bro, Deion Brown, I'm just, and then the cold blooded party, we all knew what he was doing. We all knew he was holding out for the contract. Remember? 
But instead of playing it straight, say, yeah, I was holding up. We need to get that contract straight. I ain't feel safe playing without my contract being straight. You remember that? Remember that? And I said to myself, bro, listen, bro, just tell the people that's what you was doing, man. Just come out with it. What part of the game says it's better for me just to be honest with you and tell you I was holding out because I was trying to get the contract done versus uh, I was in the building. I, was, I had got epidermal. <laughs> I know you got long hair, bro, but that's how you doing it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm going to cut it out. But anyway, man, that, we, that's going to do it for the show, fam. I appreciate y'all for chiming in tonight. Much love to the family members. Please strike upon the like button, family. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all for being in the building uh, as well. Thank y'all for jumping in on this edition of the show. And we'll be back Tuesday. Well, actually, Tuesday. The Sports Coma uh, has its Patreon show. So if you really, if you want to check with us on Tuesday, feel free to join on our Patreon. It's our Patreon show, Patreon Tuesday for the Sports Coma. It's patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network. Patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network. Patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network. For Patreon, that's what you go. You go there and it's as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, several donation tiers. It helps out the platform, and we have a lot of entertaining, lot content on that channel. We got over 40 shows of TSA Q&A Live that we do. It's also on Q with Big Q, which uh, we're go I'm going to do tonight for the family members, for our Patreon family members. That's right, on Q with Big Q will be popping off tonight. We're going to do a show tonight, so be looking for the link uh, tonight as well. And also, that's, I don't know how many, four pl 14 plus shows on, on Q with Big Q, talking that real stuff. On Q with Big Q is our uh, News show that we do when we talk that real stuff, that's on that long queue. And all that's on Patreon. You can feel free to draw in the Patreon. The link is in the description section below. If you also want to help out and become a YouTube member, you can. You can join the YouTube membership, and you'll have access to that TSC Q&A live show that we do every Tuesday. It's smaller, more personable, but it's fun. You know, we, we it's a lot of fun. We joke. We have good fun there, man. We have a lot of fun there. So I like to thank all the, the Patreon champions and our YouTube member family as well for all the great things that they do what's up clue uh, clean hands big ups to you he says join you later murray goes who do you uh what do you think about trying to get ingram on vet minimum minimum he needs only 90 more rushing yards to pass deuce McAllister all time i think that's something you know what realistically speaking that's not far off because elvin kamara really needs mike uh needs really needs the guidance of mark ingram i would not be upset about having ingram come back on a veteran deal especially how really great Ingram and Kamara got along. And just imagine the type of bullshit that Ingram has been getting into since uh, uh, Ingram, I mean, Kamara has been getting into since Ingram has, get, has been off the team. Do you think that he would have done that December stuff last year, that Christmas Day game stuff, when he ran off to the strip club and, and almost and contaminated the whole, could have contaminated the entire running back room? Remember that? Would he have done that if Ingram was on the team? Chances are probably not. Ingram would have steered him in the right direction. So I'm with you on that, clean hands. I think that would be a terrific move. If we did go back to Ingram, it would help Elvin Kamara's maturity level out, and it would bring him back a fan favorite to the team. And he's also best friends with uh, Cam Jordan. So I think that would be a really great thing to do. Really, it really would if he's healthy. So I think that would be a tremendous thing. And we've brought back guys before we brought back guys before when Jari Evans left, we brought him back. So we bring back Saints players from uh, Malcolm Jenkins. We brought him back. We bring guys back all the time. So why not Ingram? I like that. I like that, clean hands. Thank you for that suggestion. Real good suggestion there. All right. What else we got there chiming in there? Brandon says Kamara and Ingram were arguably the best. I would not be upset about that. Willie says, man, Mark run like he got a uh, piano in his back. <laughs> I think I like it though, man. I like that, man. I like uh, the com the uh, to have him back. It would help out Elvin Kamara, maybe to stop him from doing all that damn lying. You know, you think that Kamara would have came up with the epidermal excuse if Mark Ingram was there? Mark Ingram would have probably helped him with a better excuse, or just told him, man, just tell the people the truth. You know, don't be a liar, man. You know, and a lot of people ain't gonna the reporters ain't gonna call him out on that. And they ain't gonna do that. I will do it though. I call y'all. I don't got no problem calling your ass out. You know what I'm saying? Like I often tell a great Saint think tank, it's not about the players or the coaches. It's about you. And I'm meaning you, meaning you, the great Saint think tank, the black and gold nation, the who that nation. That's what it's about. It's about you. It ain't got nothing to do with them. 
And truth be told, like I keep telling you, that if somebody else would be paying these guys, they'd be running over your team. So, I mean, listen, their loyalty is tied to a dollar. Is your loyalty tied to a dollar? Nope. It's a different narrative. It's all your, your loyalty is tied. You have love. Un, unmitigated, undiluted, pure, straight up, hard, cold love for this team. Nobody paying you to sit your ass in front of that television Sunday after Sunday to white, watch the black and gold pay. No, no, you know that. No, nobody paying you or me no money to do that. You're doing that because that's your squad and you love your squad. You know what I'm saying? It's a different motivation from them. I just all I want people to understand. And let me and before I dirk out, let me say this, family. We had a guy ask the question on one of the shows. I wanted to address the man's question, man, that he asked about a prior video that we did, uh, which we've been, been doing pretty good. I think it was the Super Bowl, uh, the rigs, the, the Super Bowl rigged episode. So if you're listening, my friend, let me let me give you your let me see if I can find his name on it. OK, <clears throat> his name is Richard. Now, Richard, if you're listening, you know, if you're listening live, you listen live or you listen on the replay. I'm going to answer your question. Richard asked me, I think it was a day ago. This was from the TSC Unleashed. Uh, the Unleashed shows that I do from time to time, which are a little bit more edgier than the sports coma. Could you imagine that? An edgier show? But that's what the TSC Unleashed is, where we touch a, a higher level. So it's more than, you know, my regular Saints commentary to a degree. It's still sports related, but it's more edgy. And it's, it covers like the, uh, the, un, the, the, the episode that this person, Richard Larson, is asking me the question from is from... Um, the TSC Unleashed former Bucks defensive back says NFL is rigged, right? That was the White Smith, I want to say, said that the NFL is rigged. And y'all remember on the TSC Live, I played the um, the entire interview from the White Smith uh, saying that, you know, everything he was saying, he was keeping it a, a 100%. He was keeping it real deal holy field. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> So what I wanted to do is I wanted to answer the man question. He said, well, his comment or question, whatever. He says, I'm not sure I understand, Big Q. On this video, you're talking about how the NFL is rigged and fake, yet you're still promoted the Saints on the other videos like they're not fake, like all the other teams. I don't get it. All right, that's a good question uh, that he's asking. Now, listen, now I often say this from time to time. Now I'll say it again just to clarify. Thank you, Robert. And I hope this answers your question is that the mentality that I have toward the Saints, and I'm going to keep it real, that's all I can ever do. That's my, my mantra, and I live by it. I keep it real deal, holy field. And what I'm saying about the NFL rig is that certain aspects of the NFL is definitely rigged. It's scripted, no doubt about it. I would even go into, even uh, tell the family members that, um, uh, how can I phrase this in a certain way here? Um all right. Certain aspects of the game is definitely controlled. The referees, let's just address the referees. The referees are, are very controlled, you know, to the point where they have communications that tell them to a degree what calls to make. When they go into and like and when it goes into like into the playoffs, you really start seeing it even more controlled. Where referees are spending a lot of times on their headphones talking to somebody over the uh, over the uh, replay system because they're in constant they're in consultation with referees that's in another area telling them what calls to make, you know, and it's controlled to a degree. Now that's not saying the entire dynamic is controlled. The white Smith did say that all of the, all of the Super Bowls were rigged and he's right. Most of those, Super, all the Super Bowls were rigged because it felt it, it had to fit a certain narrative and in the goal into it from a litigious standpoint, that the NFL is not actually a football league. It's really classified as an entertainment league because they had to change that without telling you that because if if it's if it's football, then they could be sued for scripting games. That means that's illegal. You can do some jail time and get sued behind that. So it's different if you are an entertainment league as far that you can have scripted content. Now, I'm not saying all of it's scripted, but when you get into the playoffs, a lot of it is scripted. And in the regular season, certain referees will call games to get an outcome so they can line teams up. 
that benefits the bottom line in Vegas. Now, any everybody that know anything about gambling knows that the house always wins, right? And that they, all of the money and the lines, the fantasy football leagues and all that they have is all ran out of Vegas. We all know who runs Vegas. We all know where Vegas came from. I just watched a documentary on uh, Lefty Rosenthal. If you don't know who that is, you need to look that up. R Lefty Rosenthal. And remember, Lefty was the guy <clears throat> that played in the movie Casino. Remember the movie Casino? All that is real-time gangsters. And then it goes back before them. But anyway, what I'm saying is it's all controlled to a degree to get a certain outcome. But, but you can beat them at that system if you play above the referees. I've personally watched New Orleans Saints beat the referees and the team that they were playing on the field the majority of the time. Now, he says, now I talk about the Saints and I talk about the NFL rig. Now, his mentality is like, if you're going to say it's rig, then why would you cover it? Because my mentality is this. Once you break out the fact that it is to a degree that the referees are in a dynamic that's trying to control these games and you bring awareness to the people that's doing it, it makes them withdraw their hands off of it because they're like Leslie to touch these games if they know you paying attention. The reason a lot of times that they're doing this crap is because they think you were sleeping. They could cheat you in front of your face. But like I showed you in that in that same report, that I, the, the, the next report that came from the TSCC wasn't paying attention. If you were to watch the next TSC unreleased report, which had Larry Johnson on there, I covered, and then another special after that, I covered the fact that the Super Bowl this past season was the less properous, the less watched and less made money Super Bowl of all time. It was like number three, and we're going all the way back to like Super Bowl one, two, and three, less watched Super Bowls. And what that do is that's making a statement to those guys that try to script those games knowing that we watching. So if we stop watching you and you lose money, they take their hands off of it because they know you're watching. What I'm saying ultimately, Robert, is that you do not withdraw away from something that, that, that you putting into so that they can have the full reins. The awareness of it is the control of it is only there because you're not aware. But once you start paying attention and they see you paying attention and you withdrawing your support Based on the fact that you don't like what they do, they withdraw from it because in the end, they lose the money. And that's something that they won't do. And the fact that they don't like the fact that you know that they there. And I, and I say this because a lot of the stuff that we deal with in life today that we're going through right goddamn now is because these bastards created stuff and then they hid behind a wall and pretended that they wasn't there. And then they build this whole big, ugly, monstrous fucking device. Or this whole thing that's out here tearing up the world. And then while people was warning you, telling you, look what they're doing over there. You was you didn't believe the people when they was telling you when they was building it. You say, oh, you's a conspiracy guy. You don't blah, 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 blah. Now, everything them goddamn people was telling you was 100% real because they're showing it up in your damn face. So what I'm saying is when you are aware, the world changes because it's really based on you. The whole damn thing is based on you and your logic to understand what the world is like. If you're in, if you're more intelligent and a more informed populace, then they can't pull this stuff on you. They can't pull it on you. So that's what I'm saying. It all belongs to you anyway, because they created it to suck off of you. So if they did that, you take it and control it. And when you and what I mean by that is you control it with knowing, having the information and the knowledge to know how the system works then you can then take control of it. You can. And we've seen this happen countless times, countless time after countless time. We can do it. And I'm just happy that a lot of the family members stopped watching that goddamn Super Bowl, you know, and then it was the lowest of all time. That That's going to hit them in their ass. It will. They're going to like, man, these people waking up. Well, guess what? They're waking up to a lot more than you can ever possibly imagine. And it ain't just sports. It's every damn thing else. So like I said, it all belongs to you. So take it over. Take it over. Like I said, this is your team. It ain't their team. It's your team. If it wasn't for your energy, your dollars, your power, your money, your energy, this would not exist. This team wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you putting energy, power, and love into it. If you wasn't feeding energy into it, it would leave and go somewhere else, wouldn't it? They stay here because of you. So if they stand here because of you, obviously you are the shit you are the power so that's what i'm always big at is by taking possession of your power and utilizing it to your strength and your benefit that's what i'm about and that's why i talk about how i talk about 
They don't want you to know the truth. So take the truth belongs to you. They can't stop you from having the truth, baby. They can't. And they can't stop you from understanding how beautiful, strong, and magnificent you are. So they tell you you're non-essential and that you're non-unique and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. Don't believe that, gar that garbage time crap. And I tell that man, like I told you, Robert, that's what my, my mentality is. They are, it's built for you, and if it's built for you, it's yours. And when you get that knowledge and you know how it works, that changes the whole dynamic. Because they can't play with you when you know what time it is. I'm going to leave that alone. But anyway, that'll do for what that do. And that'll be the end of this year's show. Like I said, I appreciate all the family members for doing what they do and being here, man. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for being here. And I just wanted to answer Robert's question right there, man, because he asked me that question. Heart failed. He was a little confused. And I hope you got something out of that, Robert. I hope I, I got you straight, man, on that. Because it's about time the people recognize where their power is, whether it's a football team or any other place. None of this would not exist if it wasn't for you, baby. Nothing. It would not. It would not. I'm just keeping it real. With that being said, I'm a dirk out on that. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all, man. Y'all keep y'all heads up. Stay positive. Stay blessed. Be keep looking out for one another, man. And I'm gonna see y'all on see my Patreon family tomorrow on the Tuesday Patreon show. If you want to join, the link is in the description section below. If you want to hit the YouTube and join our member section, that link is also uh, on the website as well. If you want to join and it helps out the platform. Also, please feel free to share the uh, links. You have few few feel free to share the links in your social media feed groups, Reddit, Reddit, wherever you want to do Twitter. Feel free to do it. It helps out the stream as well. So much love from me and, and big ups to the great Saint Think Tank. I'll see y'all on Tuesday and the rest of y'all I'll see you on Wednesday. Saint Talk. Much love. Who that? And I'm out. Yeah. Well, all right. Like you always say. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Number one sports talk indeed. Uh, we ain't like the Falcons. We won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that? Uh, who got cut and who back? Uh, Rookies in the vets. Uh, players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma. You don't want to miss it. Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics. Get a visit for Sway. Maybe DC or five. It's the hottest thing smoking. Big Q in the guys. Go to YouTube and live. Make sure you subscribe. In the views inside the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew. Jordan, Zach, Peyton, huh. New Orleans, who that nation? Ooh. Best believe when I say we be golden black. Ain't a miracle or rivalry could ever hold us back. No, Beast Quake, Bounty Gate, let the truth be told. It's the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl.